Welcome back to Drip Quest. Today I've put together a very special video, a director's cut if you will. All 14 episodes of the series thus far, spruced up with some extras added for your viewing pleasure. Even if you've already seen every single episode, this video will be worth a watch I promise. And great news, if you've never actually seen one of these episodes before, this video is the perfect place to start. Alright, enough yapping. Grab yourself a drink, get comfy, press that subscribe button before you forget to, and let's begin this story with episode zero. Come on down to Boz Brain Axes. Tired of food sticking to your pan? Using our patent pending pan design with a special blend of Varrock iron, you won't ever have to worry about scratching, sticking, but more importantly, ever burning your food again. And remember, if it ain't Bob, it ain't brilliant. The healthier you are, the better, you know. <laughs> come, come on down to cannabis, guys. Are you sick and tired of playing your boring old main account? Perhaps you feel like those rare drops just really don't matter anymore. Well, do I have a deal for you? It's called Iron Man, by the way. Start your account fresh with little to no player interaction, but more importantly, no grand exchange. You want it, you have to earn it. And with this limited time TV exclusive offer, you can do it in hardcore mode. Double the risk, double the dopamine. Fine, I guess I'll start a hardcore Iron Man already. Jeez, stop giving me these dang ads. Wait, now that I think about it, why did all those ads sound just like me? Huh, that was weird. Get a good look, because this character will probably not be changing much for the next eternity. Alright, I did not forget to set the hardcore status, so we are in the clear to finish Tutorial Island. Series not ruined. Now that we are out of Tutorial Island, the first thing I want to do is get a bunch of the early, easy quests out of the way, and prepare for one of the biggest and longest grinds I plan on doing early on the account. The Winter Todd. One of the easiest ways to get early fire making levels is to light these four log spawns on the castle roof and world hop. So I'm gonna do this until I hit about level 15 fire making. And finally, if I could ever light this freaking log, level 15 fire making. I can now burn oak logs when I get the level to chop them. And although I haven't bonded my account yet, I'm gonna grab a few inventories of these logs to fletch tomorrow before I head off to bed. <laughs> All right, it's day two and I'm back with the bond. And now that I do have membership, I can fletch these logs I collected while on the go to massively improve the passive fletching XP I'll receive later on at the Winter Todd. Oh, and I definitely will need some starter GP, which I'll just steal here from the men around Lumbridge. And as it turns out, this cabbage spawn here is my best option for getting health back in between these pickpockets. So, time to world hop for the next 10 minutes. I'm already fed up with these cabbages, so hopefully 241 GP is enough for the time being. I'm gonna do some quests along the way to Artie, which is where I'll be grinding the levels for Winter Todd along with like a bajillion cakes to eat. First up is X marks the spot, and as someone who did the majority of their questing pre-plugin, can I just say I'm actually looking forward to just turning my brain off and following the blue marker around. And while I'm here, I might as well start the Restless Ghost quest. Oh, and I almost forgot to buy the most important thing while I was here, the Steel Axe, which I'll be using pretty much for the next eternity. I don't even know what this quest gives me, but it, I'll do it too while I'm here. That was a very easy quest, and I definitely did not just spend 10 minutes fumbling with the mirror puzzle. And all that for 3 uncut gems and 600 crafting XP. Yippee. At least that gets me all the way to level 6 crafting. Moving on. Grabbing the ghost speak amulet for later. Gonna buy wines to eat as well, because I'm not gonna be grabbing any more cabbages. F*** that. Gonna quickly teleport over to Ferox for some iron bars, which I'll need for animal magnetism and... Another quest, I don't remember. I think it's like Night Sword or something. I doubt anyone will even be able to PK me here at this level of level, but I did download the player alarm plugin just in case. Not that I could even escape with only four wines, but whatever. Seven iron bars should be enough. Nobody was even close to my level range, but that doesn't mean it wasn't nerve wracking doing this with only 10 hit points. I can assure you I did not almost get lost before realizing Edgeville is back to the same portal. I promise. I'll need these nettles at some point, I think. Ooh, a genie. I'll probably be holding on to this lamp for quite some time because I want to use it on her blower, but very nice. And this lever is how I'll easily make my way over to Artie. It's far more likely I'll get PK'd in this deep of wilderness compared to earlier, but surely nobody's sitting at this lever. And this should be two easy diary tasks completed. I think I have to teleport from this lever as well. Okay, yeah, there it is. 
All right, no more wilderness for the time being, we're in the clear. I'm going to do a few of the easy quests here first, starting off with Hazel Cult and the Monk's Friend quest. And I might as well do Clock Tower while I'm in the area. Okay, calm down, relax. We're, we're fine, we're fine. Clock Tower quest completed. Pretty worthless quest reward, but 500 coins is 500 coins. That's the Monk's Friend quest completed, 8 Law Runes, and that bomb-ass party. Plus that's enough woodcutting XP to reach level 14. Hazeel Cult quest completed, 2000 GP along with enough XP for level 13 thieving. It is now time to grind out these regular and oak trees until I get to level 4 teaks. Let's get started. Level 15 woodcutting already, I can now start chopping the oak trees. Level 23 fire making, and as an added bonus, total level of 100 on the account. Level 30 fire making. I can now light willow logs, although I'll probably never do that. I think they're slower. Level 30 woodcutting. I can now chop willow trees, although like I said before, I'll probably not do that. Level 31 woodcutting. I can now use an atom and axe, although I won't be able to even obtain one anytime soon. Very cool. 35 fire making. I now have the level to burn teak logs. I just need my woodcutting level to catch up and we're done here. Level 33 woodcutting and total level 125 achieved on the account. I just got a mystery box from a quiz random. Imagine if I pull a stale baguette on the first try. Honestly, that's awesome to get. And it's a step that I can actually complete. I'll put it on the back burner for now, but I do want to complete this as soon as possible. Plus I do have this beginner clue from the trees already. Level 35 woodcutting. I finally have the level two cut teak trees and the final fire making level at this spot, level 39. I'm going to burn the rest of this inventory and then it's time to go steal a bajillion cakes. There were a lot of thieving bots here, but thankfully I found an open world with only two ups. Alright, I, I might have spoke too soon. Level 14 thieving coming in. Fortunately, it seems that I steal faster than the bots, so honestly, get bozo. Level 20, 25 thieving. I switched to silk for a bit because I'll need a little bit of extra cash and also a couple pieces of silk for quests. Level 27 thieving. Someone let the guard out in the last world and I almost died, but we're okay. All right, that is a grand total of 213 cakes and 108 silk to sell mostly. I'm gonna grab a few items to go do one of the worst quests in the entire game and grab two pieces of the Clue Hunter outfit along the way for warm clothing. And of course the god awful quest I'm referring to is Sheep Herder. Let's get it done. All right, that should be Sheep number one. I got it stuck twice along the way and had to grab a new one, but hopefully the rest will go more smoothly. Sheep number two, that somehow went worse than the first one, oh boy. Okay, sheep number three, that was actually really easy. Oh no, please no. No, it's stuck up here, fuck this quest, dude. I had to go grab a new one and thankfully it didn't get stuck this time. And that's quest complete. All that for 3000 coins. Happy days, I'm rich, so forth and so on. Moving on. I'm making a quick detour for some crafting supplies and to get a swamp paste. And while I'm here, starting the tribal totem quest. More importantly, I wanted to do the sea slug quest to get my fishing level up while I'm here. A quick quiz master random, this time I'll get the baguette for sure. That's not a baguette, but it is a pretty cool drop actually, and my new best in slot melee, so awesome. Alright, sea slug quest complete. And that is enough fishing XP to bring me all the way up to level 24. Very nice. I sold most of my silk, and I now have a whopping 10.7k cash stack. We're in the big leagues now. Tribal totem quest complete. That gives me just enough XP to get level 28 thieving. I didn't really think about the swordfish reward, but that's okay. It is now clue scroll time. I'm going to try and complete this clue. And I got a lumberage step, which is perfect actually, because I was headed there for a few things anyways. And that's the casket already. Too easy. Let's go open this up. First clue on the account. What do we get? Dog shit. Of course it's dog shit. Why wouldn't it be? Honestly, what was I expecting? Quickly stopping for the sheep shear quest. The clearly superior sheep quest in the game, if I do say so myself. And that got me seven crafting. Starting a poor sign of interest while I'm here, though I'm definitely not completing it for quite some time. And while I'm here at Diango, 
why don't I treat myself to the first skill cape on the account? The Cabbage Cape. Goddamn. And while I'm in the area, I'm gonna progress Rune Mysteries and grab the Skull for the Restless Ghost. Starting Vampire Slayer for later on. And that's X marks the spot completed. Another XP lamp, which I can't use yet, and a beginner clue, which may or may not have just been wasted, because I already had one. Starting the Pirate Treasure quest. Actually, I'll just go and do most of it. Why not? Rum acquired, just like that. Going to buy a few of the items I need for a Druidic Ritual, and a few other quests, like the Knight's Sword. And I might as well buy a ton of these feathers while I'm here. Pretty sure I'll need those. Also, starting the Corsair Curse quest. And I need, like, every tool in this shop and other stuff, so I'll just buy all this too. Plus I did forget to milk a cow, so just do that now. I need to buy woad leaves for the dye, starting the Knight's Sword quest, and also Black Knight's Fortress. I feel like I have 50 of these quests in progress already, but it's fine. Time for this beginner clue. But I'll also start Gertrude's Cat while I'm here, of course. Starting Demon Slayer along the way. And I might as well start Romeo and Juliet. Also starting Priest in Peril. At some point I'll start completing these, I swear. I know this is getting old at this point, but I'm also, also, also starting Shield of Rav. And after like every single bookshelf in this entire library, I learned about Thurgo for the Night Sword quest. Grabbing the first Silverlight key while I'm here. And I might as well grab the second one. I've never done the Daddy's Home mini quest on my main account even, but I heard it's pretty worthwhile, so I'll go ahead and complete that real fast. I was gonna buy a few runes while I was here, but I almost forgot the Rune Mysteries package, so I'll go ahead and progress that while I'm here. Starting the Family Crest while I'm next door, but I know for a fact I won't complete this anytime soon. You know, this might be the very first actual combat on the entire account, but I'm gonna try and complete the Shield of Arav real quick. I can't even say spot this guy properly, but there's level 2 magic. And while I'm in the bar, progress for the Vampire Slayer quest. The person I was gonna do Shield of Rav with did it with someone else first, and after trying the friends chat, I decided to just make another account use my main to safe spot the NPC. Thankfully that worked, and this quest is free to play, so I didn't have to bond another account. It took about 20 minutes, so it wasn't that bad. Starting Rag and Bone Man 1 while I was nearby at the Lumberyard. And that's Gertrude's cat completed. That gives me enough XP to get level 12 cooking. And I now have a kitten I can raise up and sell for death runes. All the way up to level 6, construction from the bed. And with that, the mini quest is complete. Gives me a free POH and enough EXP to get all the way to level 8 construction. Oh, and I got this supply crate, which is very handy. You know, I might as well use these planks I got since it will increase the passive construction XP I get from repairing the Wintertop Braziers, so I'll go ahead and do that. And this should be the last level. Level 12 construction. While I'm here, I'm gonna do the Witch's Potion really quick. Quest complete. Literally took like 60 seconds. Level 5 magic and combat level 5. Very cool. I'm super strong. Alright, it's finally time to make the very long trek over to the Teak Trees, where I'll pretty much live until I reach level 50 fire making. I forgot to grab a forestry kit for the very very slim chance of actually getting an event. Ow, f***er. Alright, I'm going the other way this time. Ooh, a another genie random, which normally would be really nice, but unfortunately I'm just losing another inventory slot since I do want to save them for her blower, but oh well. Damn, a dragon implant? If only I had the level to catch that. Somebody come back to this clip in like five months when I have the level to catch those and I literally can't find any. Alright, this is my new home for the next how many ever hours? Let's get it started. Level 40 fire making. First ever forestry event across any account, so I don't know what to expect, but neat. 39 woodcutting, and already a total level 200 on the account. 45 woodcutting. These levels are really starting to slow down now. And this should be the last log for level 50 fire making. I can now access the Winter Tots prison. Time to skedaddle. Just a few more things to do before I start the winter top grind. First off, I'm doing the Tower of Life quest for a few more construction levels. Quest complete. That gives me enough XP for level 10 crafting, 29 thieving, and all the way to level 15 construction. Oh, and that is total level 225. Grabbing the hardcore armor because I completely forgot about it. And after about 5 minutes of killing this bear, it is finally dead, and I can yoink this bear meat for a druidic ritual. And this raw rat meat. 
finally starting druidic witch roll so I can use these XP lamps. And, well, basically every lamp in the future I receive. Druidic ritual quest complete. That unlocks the herbore skill and brings me all the way up to level 3. And I can now use these lamps and finally get them out of my inventory. Which only gets me to level 4. I also wanted to complete this beginner clue scroll. And after an incredibly long walk, that is the casket. I'm gonna see if I have a second one to claim before I open this. Alright, moment of truth. Another XP lamp for Herblore, which brings me all the way to level 6, and a second beginner clue, which honestly, for now, I'll just hold on to because I really don't feel like walking all the way across the map again. Starting the Klein of Corinne quest before I make the long walk up to Wintertot. Just got some new drip from the Forester random. Honestly, it looks pretty fire. And since I didn't feel like doing the second clue right now, I'll go ahead and open up this casket. Hopefully, it's something better than the easy one we did earlier on. Okay, honestly, that's a very good reward. I should see some use out of that when I eventually get a rune sim later on, but for now it'll just live in my bank. It's finally time to start the winter tuck grind. Whether you love this place or hate it, most Ironman accounts that are trying to be efficient come here for early starting GP, magic logs for quests, and all kinds of other stuff. And since the Winter Tot is easier to do with low HP, most people will typically stay here until at least level 80 or 90. But I'm taking it one step further. Not only am I staying here until I get level 99 fire making, I'm also staying until I get the full Pyromancer set, including the warm gloves even though they don't really do anything, a broom with torch just because, and a tome of fire to really complete the set. I'll be opening the loot crates as I get them until I get the full outfit in order to shave off a few hours on the grind. But I'll save every single crate I receive after that all the way up to level 99, and then we'll open them all at the end. Hopefully we get a little lucky, but uh, let's get this drip. Opening these first four crates, eh, 5k isn't bad, and the rest is pretty garbage. Let's get back to it. Level 56 fire making, and that is total level of 250 achieved on the account. What the f***? Somebody dropped a dragon axe here? Level 61 fire making, plus a medium and hard combat task completed. That is level 21 fletching and total level of 275 achieved on the account. Very nice. Level 50 woodcutting. In case you were thinking I skipped over the loot crates, don't worry. I saved up two big ones from solos and about a dozen regular ones. So let's open these up. That is the first piece of the Pyromancer Drip achieved. Very nice. And 10 burnt pages, which I don't really care about, but it is another collection log slot. Just rip open this big crate. That's not great. And the second big crate. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. Well, we go again. One more big loot crate just for good measure. Damn. Good fight. And another crate full of junk. Bang. Garbage. Heh. <laughs> Level 69 fire making. Nice. Bam. 8k GP. Not bad. Here is a 28 item crate to open. Eh. Pretty mid loot overall, but I did get a Bruma torch, so that's another item I wanted to get cross off the list. Not bad. I completely forgot to bring food, so I'm just gonna shamefully stand over here until it's finished. And that's another easy combat task completed. And I got the warm gloves, proving that scuffed equals stuff. Too easy. Level 72 fire making and total level of 300 achieved on the account. Plus I have three celebratory crates to open. Garbage. A banana weed, not bad. And more garbage, very cool. Bam. Boom. Pow. Yoink. More pages. Gimme. Okay, triple coin drop, I'll take it. That's maybe rare, I don't know. Just rip it open. And garbage. Ew. Level seven herblore. I've been five XP away for the longest time. It was really starting to annoy me. And level 13 cooking for the same reason. Plus I need some more rapid dopamine, so level 14 cooking. And lastly, level 17 cooking, extra food for later, and my addiction has been refueled. Level 2 prayer, and combat level 7, just from the bones of people dying here at the winter tot. Two more crates to open. And pretty mid loot as to be expected. Three more crates, and some more burnt pages, not bad. Another crate. 
another two mahogany seeds, four more crates to open, and a ton more garbage. Another four crates, and I'll take the burnt pages. Another four crates, and that's another four rolls of disappointment. Level 77 fire making. I only managed to get three crates this time. And it's trash. Yoink. Oh, a pyromancer hood? Let's go. And hit me with that back to back. Okay, more like back to shit. Level 35 fletching. Level 35 construction. As per usual, another four crates. And at this point, I'm happy to at least get a mahogany seed. Three more crates to open and filled with more disappointment. All right, you know the drill, just about to open some more garbage. Eh, actually those were quite good, not bad. Level 79 fire making and total level 325 achieved on the account. We are zooming. Last few crates were decent. Let's see some more goodies. Eh, whatever. All right, this time I'm really feeling these four crates. Nope, nope. Oh, Pyromancer Road? And another torch? That's, that's a very nice opening. Another three crates, but this time I'm not expecting anything since the last few were quite good. Yep. Oh, wait, I actually got the boots? That means I'm done and I can actually save the crates from now on. So from now on until level 99, no more crates will be opened. And of course, here's a quick drip update. Psych, give me the pet. Oh, okay. That, that was the last crate, I promise. Level 80 fire making. And that is kill count number 100. Very nice. 85 fire making. And I can now make an infernal axe if I ever manage to get the drop for one. Quick supply crate update. Looking really nice. Level 58 wood cutting and total level 350 on the account. That is 200 winter tide kill count. Level 60 wood cutting. That is level 90 fire making. And another quick supply crate update. The tab is looking very, very nice. 92 fire making. We are officially half of the way to 99. Level 45 construction. And that is a total level of 375 achieved on the account. Level 50 fletching, that is kill number 300. Level 95 fire making, only four more levels to go. Level 53 fletching, I can now craft a toxic blowpipe, maybe at some point, I don't know. That is 400 kill count achieved. Level 97 fire making, only two more levels until we're out of here. I am all but out of food, so I needed to cook up some of these tuna real quick. And level 19 cooking, level 20 cooking, 21 cooking, and finally, level 22 cooking, and that is total level of 400 achieved on the account. Level 98 fire making, only one more to go until I'm finally free of this place. That is kill number 500, level 50 construction, and after this game is finished, level 99 log burning has been achieved. The first 99 of many, but more importantly, we can finally open all the crates that I've been saving up, and get out of here. Next time on Drip Quest. Nah, I'm I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna actually leave this video on a cliffhanger. Let's uh let's open these crates.
Finally got a Tome of Fire, which is the last piece for my fire making drip. And at this point, it would probably be better to just save the rest of the crates, but I'm just gonna go ahead and open them. No way I actually just got the f***ing pet. This account is actually rigged, dude. What the f***? Phoenix, two tomes of fire, the full set. Like, I, I got everything but the dragon axe. Like, that. I, it's so lucky. Like, what? I mean, of course, I love actually getting the pet. But, like, please don't let that be my only good RNG. I don't want to get spooned at Wintertot just to go dry everywhere else. Oh, man. Well... I don't really need to open any more of these, to be honest, but I might as well just finish them off. And if I green lock it here, then well, I might need to just restart my account. And the last crate, nope. Unfortunately, we did not get a Dragon Axe, but Regardless, that was by far the best opening I've ever had at Wintertot, and hopefully we keep this kind of correct RNG going forward. At the end of last episode, we got spooned with our first pet on the account, the Phoenix. So, it's safe to say my addiction levels are currently through the roof, but as nice as it would be to spend another 10 days here at Wintertot, it's finally time to continue progressing the account. Obviously, we have to go pick up the fire making cape, which is located somewhere around here. But first, let's clean as many of these herbs as possible in case any more XP randoms feel like showing up. And that's all the herbs I can clean for now. Let's go get our fire making cape. I would like to get scammed for 99k, please. Nah, but seriously, although the fire making cape is one of the more useless ones, serving as basically a glorified candle. I will see some use out of it as a defensive cape, and it is the last piece of drip for the fire making outfit. Not counting the Tome of Fire, which I did get, but I just can't wield yet. But that officially completes one out of 23 skills on the account, which feels absolutely great to achieve. It is now time to go on a bit of a shopping spree and get a whole bunch of quest progress while I figure out where exactly I'm going next. That is a very nice pair of beekeeper's boots acquired. I'm not particularly going for all the random events due to how rare the stale baguette is, but it's nice to get. I know I already bought feathers earlier, but at some point I do plan on barbarian fishing, so I'm just gonna get way more than I need while I have the extra cash. Red berry pie cooked first try, too easy. And while I'm next door, I'm just gonna buy a load of runes. That is the client of Corinne the quest completed. And of course, both these XP lamps are going straight in the herb lore, which brings me up to level 17. That red berry pie is for my beloved Thurgo, of course. Well, I mean, the it's for the Night Sword quest, but everybody loves Thurgo, right? Starting the Queen of Thieves quest. Quick detour to plow for an eternity for the favor. I accidentally aggroed this bat, but that's level 10 and 11 magic, along with 8 combat and this giant bat wing for Rag and Bone Man. Back to the plow. Turning all my Winter Tot Sulfur into Fertilizer for the favor, and just hit 6 farming along with total level 425 on the account. Honestly, getting Hosidius favor isn't anywhere near as bad as I remembered. Level 30 thieving, 40 thieving, that is the pirate's treasure quest completed. The treasure itself is garbage, but we want those sweet, sweet quest points. Starting one of the easiest quests in the game, and within the same dialogue box, that is Dork's quest completed. One more quest point and level 12 mining. Very nice. Also starting the below ice mountain quest while I'm in the area. And that is goblin diplomacy completed. An extremely easy 5 quest points and level 12 crafting. Since I've basically completed Winter Tot on this account, I can finally level up my hit points, so let's do the Witch's House. <sighs> no way I just did that. Alright, we've made it to the sketchy part of this quest. Let's see if I even remember how to safe spot these. Please, just get into the fucking corner, dude. Uh-oh. Oh my god, that was fucking awful. I actually almost lost my account to Witch's House. <laughs> nah, dude. That is the last mob killed. Let's get this boy his balls back. Quest completed. That brought our HP from level 10 all the way up to level 24. Very nice to have on a hardcore. Starting the fishing contest. And while I'm in the area, I wanted to buy some Eye of Newt packs so I can turn all my guams into attack potions. 
That's level 22 Herblore, and I am all out of usable materials once again. That is the Knight's Sword quest completed, which gets us all the way to level 29 smithing. Finally completed the Restless Ghost quest, 1125 juicy prayer experience, and level 13 prayer. Starting the Feud quest, that is the Sleeping Giants quest complete, that gets us level 33 smithing and access to the Giants Foundry minigame which I will be more than likely returning to at some point in the near future. I forgot to record actually starting the quest, but I'm going to quickly complete the tourist trap, and of course I'll be destroying the mercenary captain with this cheeky little safe spot. That is the tourist trap completed, and of course I'll be taking the free XP at agility, which brings us all the way up to level 26. Very nice. The skill took so long that I got three entire magic levels and burnt through like 400 runes, but that's level 19 magic and 17 combat. And that is the feud quest completed. A whopping 15,000 thieving experience, getting us all the way to level 45, and we can now blackjack bandits for some very decent XP per hour. And speaking of blackjacking, I might as well just bash this guy's head in and rob him for a little bit. Okay, it is very, very scary to mess this up with only 25 hit points. I'm, maybe I'm just garbage, to be honest. Level 50 thieving. I now have the level to go get the rogues outfit, so I think I'm gonna quit blackjacking for now. And that is the observatory quest complete. Two more quest points and level 19 crafting. That is the fishing contest quest completed, which brings us all the way to level 27 fishing. Also decided to complete the murder mystery quest while I was here and that's level 21 crafting. I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but I want to go barbarian fishing, so I'm just going to sit here and fly fish for, I don't know, until I get bored. Level 30 fishing. I can now catch salmon, so that should speed this up quite a bit. Level 34 fishing is a very important milestone. I can now wear the angler's outfit, which of course I'll be going to get very soon. Level 35 fishing. I can now fight Temporos, which I'm actually going to try just for a change of pace. Starting the Prince Alley Rescue, I stopped by the Shooting Star along the way and got level 15 mining. I actually kind of like these as an AFK activity, so maybe I'll power mine some iron or do these a little bit more often. Made it to Temporos. To be honest, I've never even done this boss before, but unlike the Winter type, I shouldn't be here for that long. First Casey and I literally forgot to grab a harpoon, it's not looking too good. That is level 39 fishing, but more importantly, a total level of 575. Level 40 fishing, I can now go catch lobsters with all the free to play bots if I wanted to. And after about an hour of failing, I finally managed to solo Temporos and complete the Y Cook hard combat task. Level 48 fishing, I now have the level required to start barbarian fishing, but I'm gonna stay here for just a little while longer. Level 30 cooking, level 50 fishing, now that I have level 50 fishing, I'm gonna open up these 88 reward permits I have saved up. In case you're wondering why I wait until level 50, it's because with the added swordfish, the raw fish table isn't complete dog shit. And our first collection lock from Temporos is of course the Spirit Flakes. And that is the last reward. Unfortunately, nothing really stand out here other than the casket, which gives us an easy clue and tooth half of a key. Not terrible. Doing the two clue scrolls I have, but really quickly stopping by Nermoth to grab my new best in slot pickaxe for probably the next eternity. After a very long walk across the map, I got the casket. I'm just gonna rip these open. Black Kite Shield G, which is very cool. And nothing. Not bad, I guess. And I can't even wear it. Quickly just grinded out level 20 mining for the shooting stars I come across. It was really annoying only being able to mine tier 1 stars. Speaking of stars, I'm waiting for another one, but that is level 22 mining and total level of 600 achieved on the account. Level 26 mining. Was it worth spending 20 minutes just to mine this star? I don't know, but I did. And I'm sure this video is all over the place at this point, but I decided to just go ahead and get our full angler's outfit. Catch number six, and that is our first piece of the angler outfit. I gotta say, fishing trawler isn't that bad. It's just so boring with all the AFK. Catch number 12, and we get the angler's hat. Catch number 14, and we got spoon with the angler top. Honestly, just give me the last piece so I can get the fuck out of here. That is the angler boots at catch number 20. Absolutely spoon, but I'll take it because this place fucking sucks. I changed my mind. I hate it. Oh, and here's the rune light log for fishing trawler in case you wanted to see the loot. And of course, for fashion purposes, I want to eventually get the full spirit angler set, but for now, that is the headband. Here's another 19 permits to open. 
And nothing good yet again. Nine more permits. Really hoping to get the fishing barrel before I have to leave here. And some more garbage. Another ten permits. And not that I could even complain at this point. It's more garbage. Level 55 fishing. Another 15 permits worth of disappointment. Level 56 fishing. For now, I think that's good enough, and I'm just going to stop. And the last 11 permits for quite some time. And, of course, to be expected, it's some more garbage. Quickly running over to the mage training arena to buy some cosmic runes so I can make the game's necklace. And before I start fishing again, I'm going to start a few more quests. First up is the waterfall quest. And the dwarf cannon quest. Also starting the fight arena quest. This should be relatively safe. And that's quest complete. In total, I got 23 magic, 19 combat, and level 29 attack. Starting the Tree Gnome Village quest while I was getting the pebble. And that's another easily cheesable quest, boss. That is the Tree Gnome Village quest complete, which brings us all the way to level 35 attack. Very, very juicy. Starting the Grand Tree quest. That is the Waterfall quest completed. That brings us all the way up to level 30 strength, 40 attack, and combat level 31. Huge gains. Level 30 magic. I was just trying to get Spoonder in Sim real quick, but it's not working out so well. The plan for today is to get the full Grace Vault fit as soon as I possibly can. According to the OSRS wiki, the agility course of the second most marks of Grace per hour is Canifus. And of course, since I don't want to do actual agility training, I'll be Barbarian fishing for the rest of the XP. So I'll be here until either level 40 agility, or if I get bored, I'll take a break and do some more questing, I guess. Let's go. That is level 27 agility, and a massive total level of 700 achieved on the account. 28 agility, and I'm currently getting about 2800 agility XP per hour, so not terrible. At least I'm not actually running laps. 57 fishing. I just wanted to point out that I did plan on 3 ticking this, but I gave up like immediately because I'm lazy, so that's why this log's been in my inventory this whole time. Level 58 fishing. I can now catch Leaping Salmon, which should speed the XP up quite a bit. Level 30 agility. I can now do the agility pyramid if I'm ever super super desperate for cash, but I... Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Six day fishing, and I can now catch whatever the fuck a mysel fish is. I've never seen that before in my life. I probably won't include all the other strength level ups, but it's important to note that I also am leveling up my strength pretty much in tandem with agility, so that's level 35 strength. And level 33 agility. I've been doing this for like three and a half hours, so I'm gonna take a bit of a break. Very quickly completed the cook's assistant, and starting recipe for disaster, which, you know, Definitely won't get finished for quite some time, but progress. I managed to get all four colored beads by killing imps here and there, so that is the imp catcher quest completed. And the amulet of accuracy is actually my best in slot for all three styles until I get my crafting level up, so that's nice to have. Also, I have to go into the basement for a clue step and to complete room mysteries while I'm here, so that is the room crafting skill unlocked. Let's go finish up this clue scroll. And really quickly, I managed to complete the Halloween event before it ended, so that is a bunch of past cosmetics and two sets of Halloween masks, if I ever want to wear any of those, I guess. All right, let's open up this beginner casket. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's just that easy. Look at those bad boys. Yeah, damn. That is the Vampire Slayer quest completed and level 41 attack. And while I was here, of course, Ernest the Chicken quest complete. All right, it's time for the Grand Tree boss, which should be fairly safe. Although I guess technically I could get two shot, but let's get it done. Okay, I, dude, uh, uh, apparently I can't read. Like, I almost lost my account again to a quest. And now, of course, I just have to find this rock. Nope. 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 Not here. It's not here either. Okay. Bro. I'm, I'm actually running out of roots. For real? Okay, seriously? Oh my god, 11 roots to get the Deconia rock. At least I know where my RNG's been going. And that is the Grand Tree quest complete. A buttload of XP, but what I care most about right now is that juicy agility experience, which brings us up to level 36. Oh, and a total level of 725. I still want to get a rune sim for the ornament kit we got in episode 1, so I figured I'd try my luck at the Zamorak Warriors, which have a drop chance of 150. 
compared to the 1 in 128 at Fire Giant. So let's grind this out. Level 30 hit points and level 35 combat. Whoa, that was easy. Only 28 kills to get the rune sim. Let's go attach that ornament kit. Bam. We are now the proud owners of a very nice Ceridon and Rune Scimitar. This will let us look at least 1% cooler for a short while before we replace it with the dragon one. And I totally forgot about the museum quiz, but that's level 9 Slayer and 9 Hunter. Very, very easy. 24 crafting and a total level of 750. Level 30 crafting, level 30 mining, and I can now access the Motherload Mine. 35 mining. I actually uh, really enjoy AFKing at these stars. That is 35 crafting, 37 mining, but more importantly, a total level of 775. Level 40 mining, I can now mine gold ore. Fun fact, I did not receive a single piece of gold ore from Wintertot, so I guess I'll have to be mining that manually. And level 41 mining, we can now use our sick rune pickaxe. And I know this fishing break has really gone on for far too long, but one last thing before I go back. Let's quickly get 10 defense for this gold trimmed kite shield. Level 5. Level 6. Level 7. Level 8. Level 9. And level 10 defense, let's equip this thing. Honestly, it actually kind of goes with this outfit. All right, let, let's finally get back to fishing. 61 fishing. I can now equip a dragon harpoon if I ever go get one of those, which is unlikely. 62 fishing and another new fish that I'll probably never catch. Level 39 strength and a total level of 800 achieved in the account. Sick. That is agility level 40. I can now officially go unlock the Canopus course, but I think I'm going to stay here until at least level 65 fishing. Level 65 fishing, the very nice Karambon level. And since I was already so close, there's level 42 agility. I have a few more things I want to do, and I still need to actually unlock more Tanya, so let's go do that now. That is the Depths of Despair quest complete. I want to quickly unlock the kitchen so I can cook up some food for the future, so let's go do that. While I'm at the bank, very quickly, 25 herb lore, and that's level 40 cooking. I can now cook my lobsters, and we're about to unlock the kitchens. Level 45 cooking, I can now cook swordfish, but I have enough food for now, so let's go unlock more Tanya. That is one big ass guard dog successfully slain. And that's the golden key. Where there's a golden key. Wait, wrong game. And that is the priest and peril quest complete. I can now finally enter Mauritania and total level 825. And that is the first mark of grace out of the whopping 260 I have to collect. This is gonna take quite some time, but let's grind it out. That is lab number 50 and agility level 45. I'm up to a nice 22 marks. Oh boy. I've already been here for it feels like forever, but that is level 50 agility and 76 marks of grace right now. 52 agility and a nice 111 marks of grace. This is an interesting lap. I'm one mark of grace short of halfway. Lap number 349 and agility level 53. 54 agility, just over 400 laps done already. Oh my goodness, this place sucks. 55 agility, and I also got 20 nats from a random, which was pretty cool. Oh my goodness, the absolute fashion of this hat. Jesus. I didn't think I was going to be here for more than two days, but that's level 56 agility, and I'm almost at 200 marks. 57 agility, we're so close to being out of here. 58 agility and 7 marks to go, oh my goodness. That is the last mark of grace I will ever collect for the next eternity because I hated every second of this and I don't want to do it again. Okay, after like two and a half days of agility grinding, we're about to get one of the most insane drips of dopamine on the account. That is the graceful hood, graceful cape, graceful top, 
I can't see because this box is in the way. Graceful legs, gloves, and finally, the boots. That feels so, so amazing to achieve. And I was originally going to stop after getting the graceful, because that was the whole plan of this episode, but while I'm here, I might as well grab the full rogues outfit since I already passed 50 agility, right? Sheet, I got spike first try. This is gonna suck. That is the Ferris Rogue outfit crate and crate number two. Level 50 cooking, just waiting for my run energy to recharge. That is the third crate, finally. I forgot to record the last two crates, but it is time to open our full Rogue's outfit. Assuming I don't misclick and have to go back in there, of course, that would be awful, please no. And this is how the set looks, which I'm not gonna lie, looks pretty ugly. But it does double our pickpocketing loot, so definitely worth it. And if all the unlocks in the episode today weren't good enough for you, that is level 26 herbal and total level of 850 to end the video on. Having full graceful and being able to run around everywhere is nice and all, but I want to unlock as many teleports around RuneScape as I possibly can. So starting off by completing the Nature Spirit, Nothing too notable here, but a few combat levels and a prerequisite for the Lost City. On my way to get the branches for the Lost City quest, I didn't bring a teleport out, but I did bring a truckload of trout, so should be fine. That's level 40 magic, which unlocks the teleport to house spell, probably the most useful spell in the game once I get my POH decked out. Considering my close calls from some of the previous quest bosses, I half expected something to go horribly wrong, but that went quite smoothly. And although I shouldn't need more than just a couple of branches, I'm gonna just go ahead and get a whole inventory of them. Rest in peace, Trout. I didn't need you, but you served me well. That is the Lost City quest complete, and with that, access to Fairy Town. Onwards to complete Fairy Tale Part 1. And this is the moment of truth. Depending on the three items I get, this quest might not get completed for quite a while. Red spider's eggs, a slimy eel, and a bunch of grapes. That's not too terrible. It shouldn't be too hard to get my hands on all those. And back at the nature spirit to enchant. It only took a few minutes to get all the items together, so that wasn't too bad. I've been sitting here flinching as a boss for like 12 minutes. It's... I, de I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this, but completing this quest so we can start part 2 and unlock the fairy rings is just too big to put off. Finally, that is fairy tale part 1 completed, a bunch of levels, and notably, a total level of 875. I forgot to record it, but I unlocked the fairy rings. I'm gonna continue this questing spree with Plague City. That is the Plague City quest complete, the very important Ardoin teleport scroll, and level 43 mining. Let's go bust out Biohazard. And that is the Biohazard quest completed. And of course, I'll go ahead and start Underground Pass while I'm here. The main thing I care about right now though is that was the last requirement to complete the Easy Diary, so let's go finish that. I have completed all the easy tasks in the Ardoin area. And this cloak is a very, very precious item to have on an Iron Man because it provides us with infinite teleports to the monastery which for a long time will be our best method of accessing a fire ring. And of course, a nice herbal lamp. Oh, shit. I, I didn't think about that part. I couldn't really think of a good method, so for now I'm just gonna work on unlocking the next quest, which is Temple of the Eye. I wanna unlock Guardians of the Rift as soon as possible so I can eventually make my own law room, so that is the plan. Oh, and I do know that the Abyss mini quest gives a ton of room crafting XP, but I need a bit more after that anyhow, so I'm just gonna do a couple of air altar runs. Level 2, level 3. I had a bit of a crazy idea, but what if I boost and make Marintel Tar to get this herb lord level? Big brain? Fuck, it's 15 swamp tar per? Well, at least that's level 29. That is the Abyss mini quest completed. That brings us all the way up to level 10 rune crafting, which is what we needed for the Temple of the Eye. And a small rune pouch, which is pretty neat. That is the Temple of the Eye quest completed. I might have cut out all the level ups in between, but with this 5000 rune crafting XP and all the XP earned in the quest itself, that brings us all the way up to level 27. Very nice. And that is two more random event clogs. Decided to just kill unicorns for level 30 air blower, but we're about to get level 20 prayer which unlocks proselyte armor and vestment robes. Eventually I'll probably get those, but for now, back to grinding horns. And finally, that is level 30 herb lore. We can finally get this XP lamp out of the inventory. 
and that is level 31. I don't know if I'm gonna stay here until I can make Lawrence in one go, but it's time for Guardians of the Rift. Let's go. Level 40 rune crafting. I can now make astral runes at some point. About to get our first mining level. Level 44 mining. Not bad. That is a total level of 925. And that is level 40 crafting. That is level 44 rune crafting. I've been doing this for quite a while, so let's go do something else. I wanted to buy a rune axe since I do have access to the woodcutting guild, but after I saw that shop price, which is nearly 41,000 GP, I, I just decided I'm gonna nuke these tree spirits instead. That is level 42 magic, and that is level 43 magic, which unlocks the superheat item spell. And that is the rune axe. After only 28 kills, not bad at all. And additionally, a ton of nature runes from them as well. That is the jungle potion quest completed, and level 32 herblore. That is the dig site quest completed. We are one step closer to our quest cave and, and fossil island, but you know. That is the elemental workshop one quest complete, 41 crafting, and level 36 smithing. I wanted to stop by and do some wood cutting, get a few easy forestry clog slots, but I don't know, I, I just wanted AFK for a bit. That is level 67 wood cutting, and those are the new sturdy beehive parts, which are effectively useless without getting more of them, but a free collection log slot nonetheless. Ew, these shorts made me look terrible. But that is another collection log slot. And level 68 woodcutting. I think that's probably good enough. I need to get 70 eventually, but it'll come later. I'm going back to Guardians of the Rift, but bam. There's level 42 strength. That is another crafting level from this place. Level 42. 45 runecraft thing. Did you guys even know, like, technically the skill is runecraft and not crafting? Like, I, I've always called it runecrafting. I don't know. I think this place is getting to me. 46 runecrafting and another mining level from this place level 47 and just like the last clip another level 47 but this time it's rune crafting that is level 48 of the runing craft level 49 another level with absolutely no unlocks all right i need some motivation to keep going so i'm gonna open all the rewards i have saved up so far well, i mean it's only 20 pulls but that is a catalytic talisman first pull i have no idea what this is used for but cool and the pouch 153 soul runes overall not a bad opening that's a ton of laws and nature runes and the soul runes are nice after many a hour that is level 50 rune crafting and a total level of 950 achieved at the same time feels good man <laughs> yoink that is the golem quest completed and level 43 crafting which lets us cut our diamonds oh yeah Taking a quick trip to visit one of my favorite goblins in the game, Mr. Mud Knuckles. And right after I say he's my favorite goblin, of course he goes in blackface. Like, what the hell, man? Alright, bad joke aside, I needed him for his sloppy toppy. And that is our first recipe for disaster subquest completed. Very, very nice. I don't know if you could always skip the long ass meaning cutscene, but I'm very glad I don't have to do it again on this account. But that completes the giant dwarf quest. A decent amount of XP and 6 different skills, 37 smithing, 44 magic, and level 51 thieving. I don't even know this was a thing, but once you get a bunch of Varrock Museum kudos, this information clerk gives you a bunch of free experience. I only have 113, but that gives us enough XP to get 48 mining and level 44 crafting. And level 45 crafting for the eventual Maple Birdhouse. Still gonna be here for a bit, but 46 crafting, which is the level for unpowered orbs. Very quickly, I'm gonna get 40 smithing so I can get a few gold bars for some teleport jewelry. I forgot to record the mime event I got, but that two more collection log slots and level 40 smithing so I can now smelt these gold bars. One last level before going back to Gardens of the Rift, level 48 crafting. That is 51 rune crafting, only three more levels to go. Opening up some more loot. Let's fucking go, we got a needle. I, I won't be able to use that until like level 85, but that's a huge item to get. Level 50 mining and another tier star I can AFK later on. And finally, level 54 rune crafting. We can now make our very own law runes. Huge. Alright, it's, it's a bit ironic that I'm here buying law runes after I just got the level to make them. But it turns out I need to complete the troll stronghold quest first, so uh, ratio. Taking a quick trip to one of the worst places in old school runescape, the mage training arena. I want to get my magic up, but 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to do too much of this. I don't have a lot of runes, and I also don't really like it. So there's that. That is 47 magic and 975 total. 49 magic, and we can now enchant ruby jewelry. We can finally equip our Tome of Fire with level 50 magic. 51, and we can now teleport to our Doin. 52 magic, I can now boost to cast high alchemy, which I'm gonna do for a little bit. 54 magic, and my fingers are still here. That is the last level I'm getting here. 55 magic, and the high alchemy spell. That is the Shades of Morton quest complete, and level 35 air blower quest complete, and the Excalibur spec, which I probably won't even ever use. Came back to do Elemental Workshop part two. That gives us 41 swithing, and another 50 on the account, level 50 crafting. I've never done this quest while having a 99 before, but in the bard section, my character mentions 99 fire making, which I thought was pretty cool. And that is the Fremenic Trials quest complete. Another truckload of XP getting us 22 defense, 35 hit points, and level 45 combat. That is the Pirate Pete recipe for disaster sub quest completed, which gets us level 42 smithing. But that's not all. There's the Dwarf subquest complete as well, and level 13 Slayer. Quickly stop by the sewer to complete the easy Lumbridge Diary, and that was a bit annoying, but there's the Rag and Bone Man 1 quest complete, which brings us to level 21 Prayer. About to complete Bone Voyage, but that is two more collection log slots from the Grave Digger random event. In order to complete the Troll Stronghold quest, you have to kill a Troll General, which, although should be safe spotable quite easily, it can max hit 3 damage higher than my HP total right now, so just to be safe, I'm gonna get a few more levels. That is level 43 strength, and a massive total level of 1000 achieved on the account. We are gaming. Finally, our first hit points level, 36. Our first set of birdhouses are finally ready, which was the most important reason why I unlocked Fossil Island, of course. And if I did my math correct, this should be a very nice streak of dopamine. Level 11, 12, 13, and level 14 Hunter. That is 45 strength and another combat level. That is level 25 defense, 30 defense, 16 Hunter, and a total level of 1025, 35 defense. And finally, after a few hours of grinding, we are about to hit level 39 hit points. We're done. That is the Death Plateau quest completed. And the moment of truth, was our hit points grinding even worth it? Alright, it, it's stuck. Okay, yeah, if I didn't get those extra hit points levels, that would have technically been a chance. Alright, well, let's destroy this clown. And that is the Troll Stronghold quest completed, which means that finally, after so many detours, we can make our own law runes. But there's still some quests that I want to complete, so let's go do those. That is the Lost Tribe quest completed. This is one of the biggest level skips, all the way up to level 27 range from completing the Shed of the Storm quest. That is a poor sign of interest quest complete, and level 16 Slayer. Very quickly, that is the Fremenic Easy Diary completed, and the Holy Grail quest complete, a truckload of defense and prayer XP, getting us all the way up to level 31 prayer and 40 defense. That is the Mountain Daughter quest complete, and a little bit more prayer XP, getting us level 32. 52 mining and a total level of 1,075. And one very real, totally believable mounted head later, that is the Getting Ahead quest complete, and level 51 crafting. Creature of Fankenstrain quest complete. Unlock the Ring of Keros, which I uh, don't have a good use for, but it's cool. That is the Queen of Thieves quest complete, and another teleport unlocked. That is the Tale of Righteous quest complete, and yet another page with another teleport. One of the easiest but tedious quests, the Garden of Death completed. A very free 10,000 farming XP, which brings us all the way up to level 31. That is the Ascent of Arceus quest completed, level 22 Hunter, and our final book teleport. We can now teleport pretty much anywhere in Karend. A Forgettable Tale completed, 34 farming, and level 55 cooking. Forgot to do Romeo and Juliet earlier, but that is a very, very free 5 quest points. And finally, I completed Prince Ali Rescue, unlocking us free gate access between Lumbridge and Alcarid. That is a very quick seagull wing and level 28 ranged. That 
that is the Corsair Curse quest completed for much of nothing. Die, rock. And that is Below Ice Mountain quest complete. Holy shit, I'm actually so bad. Why did I not bring any food? I need to just log off for today, dude. That is Edgar's Ruse quest completed and level 39 Herblore. And the final quest for this episode, Garden of Tranquility completed. That gives us 36 farming. Very nice. The plan for today is simple. I need to somehow unlock a rune pouch from LMS despite never PKing before, get 43 prayer to unlock all the protection prayers, and hopefully I can complete enough recipe for disaster subquests so I can buy the rune gloves. That is our first quest for today, the Eyes of Glufferie quest completed. I don't think this quest is an actual requirement for Monkey Madness 1, but it is a requirement for Monkey Madness 2 way down the road, and uh, it's out of the way. I completed the Lumbridge Diary last episode, but uh, here's the lamp on Herblor, which gets us level 40. That is the easy Varrock Diary completed. Eventually, when I'm not so broke, I can do some daily battle stabs for money and a bar crawl step. Unfortunately, since I'm a low-level hardcore Iron Man, the best alternative to Wilderness Green Dragons and then taking bones to the Chaos Altar for prayer is gonna be blue dragons and then using the ectofunctus and to make matters even worse i have a very low range level right now and a bone crossbow so this might take a while and uh just for reference this is still the same blue dragon as the last clip but uh yeah level 29 ranged level 30 ranged and technically we can go get our first ava's device when we complete the quest a massive 40 hit points coming in at this point, I'm probably cutting out a lot of the filler clips, but I'm still trying to keep up on my birdhouse runs and farm runs, but that's level 30 hunter coming in. Coming up on a very nice milestone, but that's level 38 farming and 39 with a total level of 1,125 and to round it off a nice 40 farming. We're back with level 35 ranged. It's uh, it's not speeding up very much at all. Over here at the Ecto to get tokens for Ghost Ahoy, but uh, very quickly, 33 and 34 prayer. Nice little 41 defense level up. That is Ghost to Holy Quest complete. And a cheeky level 35 prayer. And of course we did Ghost to Holy to complete Animal Magnetism. So that is Quest complete. Our very first Ava's device along with level 20 Slayer. Just wanted to say that the Ava's device is so nice for making this even more AFK because I don't even really have to pick up the bolts at all. And also level 36 ranged. 37 ranged and it still sucks. Came back over here to complete the dwarf cannon quest. I think we started this in like episode one maybe, but uh, finally completed. There's the Black Knight's Fortress quest complete. The plugin actually makes this quest so chill, like I don't even have to think, I don't have to look at 29 Wikipedia steps, like, just so nice. And of course, I'm not here to just talk about the, how good the plugin is. That's the Enlightened Journey quest completed, and one of the most annoying quests in the game, but we can't get a quest cape without it. That is a Soul's Bane completed. I'm gonna try this uh, efficient skilling method where you blow glass at the same time as thieving artifacts because uh, I need to get my crafting up for some money soon. I'm getting broke. 52 thieving, 53 thieving, 54 thieving. Finally got a crafting level from this. That's 53 crafting. I'm uh, kind of overdoing this already, so I'm going to go back to questing, I think. That is 34 hunter coming in with a nice total level of 1150. Watchtower quest completed. That gives us the Watchtower teleport, which unfortunately for a very long time is an annoying, but our best teleport to Yanil. No idea how often I'm doing birdhouse clips, but that's level 35 hunter. And that is the Kander and Easy Diary completed. Another juicy XP lamp, which gives us 42 Herbie. That is the Medium Vrock Diary completed. Even more daily battle stabs if I wasn't broke. And another Herblore level. 45 farming, and I must unfortunately return to the blue dragons. I'm hoping by the time I get 40 I can buy a green dehyde and it'll help speed this up a bit, but it still sucks. <laughs> I, I wish I would just risk my account in the wilderness at this point. Finally, that's the big level 40 ranged. Grinding the bones and 
putting in the pot and getting slime, that, that all sucks, but the XP drop right here is so nice. That's 37, 38, and 39 prayer. I'm not too far off. 40 hunter coming in, along with a nice 1175 total level. So you may be wondering why I'm about to kill the Dragon Slayer boss. Yeah, it turns out I can't buy green dehyde without completing the quest first. And I will in fact get a use out of this Excalibur. That fight took a minute, but that is Elvarg slain, and finally, some runescape head. In case you wanted my quest opinion, probably the best free to play quest in the game, Dragon Slayer 1 completed. Figured some extra range levels might help, so that is Temple of Iakov complete and level 42 ranged. Kinda forgot these existed, but that is our first Hespori seed on the account. Taibo one eye favor maxed out for the diary task. And level 69 wood choppy. <laughs> nice. That is a massive level 40 prayer coming in. Only three more to go. That is my arm's big adventure completed. The troll, not my arm. Level 47 farming and 45 herbler. Little off track here, but I'm absolutely tired of having the rake weeds when I'm doing farm runs. So I made some brain dead baby tile markers to help me get through tithe farm. But I uh, still hate this place, not gonna lie. 48 farming. Some more beekeeper drip acquired, not bad. Forgot to record every part of this quest other than a phoenix. So here we are at the end, about to finish the hero's quest. And an absolutely massive XP drop across 12 skills. I ain't reading all that. And a very nice total level of 1200. Anybody else remember trying to do this as a kid and being totally lost and having to like go across this bridge 14 times? Yeah, not with the quest helper plugin. I mean, or, or the, the wiki we have now, but you know. And the recruitment drive quest complete. After an insanely long blue dragon grind, to be honest, I probably cut it down like 90%, but 43 prayer. We now have all three protection prayers on our hardcore, and the game is now easy. Coming in with another level 50 on the account, 50 farming, slowly inching closer to that base 50s. It's finally time for us to start Desert Treasure 1 and unlock ourselves a new spellbook that I won't be able to use because I'm always broke. But you know, eventually. I'm recording this very cool clip to inform you that these are the first prayer potions made on the accounts. So I definitely cannot fail Desert Treasure now, probably. <laughs> I know this is in the middle of the quest, but 50 ranged and buying ourselves a Ava's Attractor, which is a new best in slot for quite some time. Squeezing another birdhouse run here. I think I might've forgot to record the first Desert Treasure boss. So if that wasn't the last clip, a uh, good fight. I, I didn't die, so that's good. But uh, yeah, 45 hunter as well. Guys, I brought like 80 lock picks to get this chest open, and so far it's not looking too good. Oh my dude, like okay. The Grand Tree quest, I searched every route for that rock, and now I use almost every lockpick. Like, my, my account RNG is insane, but my quest RNG sucks. Coming up on the second boss, and there's also a diary task here, but... Oh, it, it really just spawns, huh? Alright, I wasn't sure exactly how to safe spot this, but we somehow stumbled our way into it. That's the diamond and the hard diary task. On to the next one. Time for the third desert treasure boss. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, so I'm just gonna say des, desus. Anyways, I found a cool trick where if you just prayer flick it, it'll never hit. So, uh, free kill. Yep, that was easy. We're on our way to go fight Camille. Probably the most dangerous boss in this quest, but uh, it should be fine. Okay, that one was rough. This place is like hell, but it's cold. <laughs> I 
Ice Diamond acquired. Just get me out of here, please. Finally, that is Desert Treasure 1 completed and a nice level 60 magic. Quick trip into the wilderness for the family crest. And that is Kornazon killed for our last piece. Family crest completed. Probably gonna buy goldsmith gauntlets, I think. And I'll start family pest now, but definitely putting that one off for ages because it's like 500k or something. 50 for crafting coming in. I can now make water battle staves, which let's be honest, I won't be doing that. But I will be trying out earth ones soon, TM. I don't have the level yet, and I don't really like going into the wilderness for these, but I'm down bad for some GP. 55 crafting. We can eventually craft our Slayer Helmet in about 50 years. 47 Hunter coming in, but more importantly, a total level of 1225. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you the worst PK in all of RuneScape, trying to get a rune pouch. But for real though, I've, I've never PK'd before in my life. And as far as I can tell, those four kills you see up in the corner were all from bots, so uh, yeah, I'll probably cut to the first real person I find. I'm so bad, it's not even funny. Ah. Yeah, I, I suck. Look at this run tech, the run. Holy moly, I feel greasy, honestly. I, I, like, I'm, I'm playing like a little rat. That was kind of close, but I, I think I'm sort of learning. And it seems like this is another bot to finish this game off. Oh, that was a bit of a close call, but another real person kill. Good fight. <laughs> no, no way, dude. I did not deserve that. Poor guy. Can't believe I actually beat Slow Nutsack. Good fight, dude. Call me the bot hunter, because these are like most of my kills, honestly. I'm not going to turn down free points, though. Okay, I don't know why he didn't switch his prayer back, but I'll take it. And that was another close call, but good fight. He's literally not praying. Hit the fucking bolt. Oh my god. <laughs> I lost that fight. No way, dude. That was so unlucky. After ages, we finally have enough points to buy a rune pouch. Honestly, 90% of that was just farming the bots. Um, probably even cut all that out, but... Um, yeah, thank the bots in this case. Oh, and a uh, free collection log slot from the Victor Cape, which is cool, I guess. I'm thinking I might do more games for the Magic Shortbow Scroll, but I'm not sure yet. was lucky. Sit the fuck down. Respectfully, of course. A lot of bots that game, but that's a good seven kill game to end it on. I think that's probably good enough.
Back to the grind again, and we're here with 55 farming. I can now plant my mahogany trees. Very nice. Honestly, I don't know if I'm putting any star clips into this video yet, but um, just figured I'd update you with 55 mining. I like doing these. Taibo Wanai quest complete, and we can officially fish ourselves some Karambwans. Karambwans? I, am I the one that always said it like Karambwans and I always hear people saying it Karambwan? Like, I, I can't be asked to say Karambwan every time. That's, I'm lazy. And of course, if you didn't know this, you actually have to talk to these NPCs to get your rewards, so don't get scammed. I figured that if we wanted to catch those nice little octopus, or octopi, I, whatever. I figured it might be worth to get a fish barrel, so we're back at the good old Temporos. The first level of the grind, 67 fishing. That is our first soaked pages for another easy collection log. And I'm gonna open these bit by bit because I don't really want to stay here longer than I have to. And our second Spirit Angler's outfit piece. I'm about to play Lethal Company with the boys and I need to AFK soon. So I'm planning on doing Karambwanji, the Karambwan bait. But before that, there's the hand in the sand quest complete. And I'll probably be back with a bajillion Karambwanji after the lethal company sesh is done. Um, guys, I... <laughs> I just looked over at my screen because I heard the notification sound go off. Um... <laughs> yeah, my... <laughs> my... My account RNG is so crazy, like, I, I... I don't even know how rare that is. I'll probably put the odds on screen, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's insane. Still AFKing while I play Lethal Company, but I figured since we got Mega Spoon to Heron, I might as well move over to Stars just in case Jagex wants to give me a Rock Golem. Not saying I deserve it, but it would be crazy. Alright boys, we're back, and we have two beginner caskets to open and our very first medium clue in the account. That's a bunch of nothing. And... Okay, what the hell's going on my RNG on this account for real? Like, two uniques from the very first medium glue. I mean, to be fair, they aren't that good, but that's still insanely lucky. Alright, just to continue the RNG in collection log slots, I might as well buy the Celestial Ring and just open up an Onyx real quick. Damn, I mean, it, it was worth a shot, right? That is another level 50 on the account. 50 Hunter coming in from exclusively doing birdhouses. Underground Pass is my contender for easily one of the worst areas in the game. But the thing that scares me the most is having to go through this another three times or whatever for the later quest. I hate fucking quest. And just like that, we have ourselves an Iban Staff, which, if you aren't aware, is basically the best in slot mage weapon until I think the new warp scepter is like 82 magic and then a trident's 87 slayer. So, yeah, catch me in like 2026 getting a trident. And of course, Underground Pass quest completed. It's time for a crafting update, level 58. Finally, we can make ourselves some tidy GP. We just need a way to get battle staves. Cheeky little easy casket coming in with another two free collection log slots. Very easy boss and level 47 hit points. And that's death to the Dorgishan quest completed. Another slice of ham quest complete. 44 prayer and a total level of 1250. Very quickly, that is the Tears of Gothix quest complete. And level 25 slayer from the tiers this week. I missed level 60 mining, but there's level 61. Close enough. Finally getting some money rolling in from the earth orbs. And that's level 59 crafting. 60 crafting, very nice. We're about to hit a 1.2 million GP cash stack. And level 64 magic, guys. My mime event is backwards. Is this common? I've never seen this before. Hunting chompy birds might be the worst activity in the entire game, but the quest wasn't so bad, I guess. Two more caskets coming in. Okay, that's a unique. I'll take it. And nothing good but some free law runes, so that's nice. That is Shiloh Village complete. We finally got ourselves a nice fish barrel, and by finally, I mean it's still on the rate, but let's go. <laughs> funny fishing level. That is our third, and for now, final piece of the Spirit Angler's outfit. 
bunch of annoying puzzles and a lot of cutscenes. Also a ton of running around with like 900 pounds of statue, but that is Inakra's Lament quest complete. Spirits of the Elid quest complete, and that brings us to level 45 prayer. Oh, and shout out this catfish guy because he gave me a nice jeezy. We're back at the tithe farm to get ourselves that auto weed perk. I cannot stay in this place, but that's 58 farming and level 59 farming. That is the camo top acquired and level 60 farming. That is Ixlorin's little helper quest completed, which should bring us to level 59 agility and starting contact while I'm here. Oh, there's the agility level pop up. For the love of God, do not fall off of this again. Oh, I think we made it. Oh, fuck. Okay, that time we did it. Olaf's quest completed and level 47 defense, along with level 60 combat. Alright, this soulless guy is literally cheating. What is that AoE? Why can't I do that? What the hell, man? That was one annoying ass quest running around everywhere, but that is wanted complete and level 29 slayer. <laughs> That is In Search of the Marquis quest complete. Finally taking a break from questing and AFKing some Karembons with the barrel. Feels good, man. And that is the zombie mask, which I believe is our last gravedigger item. Coming in with a very big level 70 fishing. I can now catch leaping sturgeons and potentially do the barboard method, but I I don't know if that's even worth it or not. Boys, we might have ourselves a doable elite clue on the account. Never mind, I can't do that yet, but I, I'll hold on to it for now. I do have three caskets to open though, so one more beginner, easy, and a medium to get spooned. Oh, another unique, cool. And the medium. Okay, another new unique and absolute bank and purple sweets. Very nice. 55 hunter coming in. Just to let you know I'm still doing these. A little bit off track now, but I'm back at Sears yet again because I want to get a cheeky little log basket. And another big level, 70 woodcutting. There we go, a very handy log basket acquired. And I promised I didn't go out of my way to get this basket just so I could AFK U logs for birdhouses. But there's level 71 woodcutting. And level 72. A quick free collection log slot with the Twitcher's gloves. And with all these feathers, another four easy clogs. Yippee! Back at it again with another medium clue since my luck seems to be so cracked. And another unique Ceridomin page four. Not bad. This is what I actually intended the log basket to be used for. AFKing teaks so I can bank them for the eventual planks. 74 woodcutting. And for the record, I know I could technically just be teleporting to my house and making the planks this way, but it's pretty awkward and quite expensive for me right now. Going to speed through these crombons to get some food stocked up for Monkey Madness 1. And at some point in there, there was 58 cooking. A massive level 60 cooking coming in. These types of things are what makes the quest level plugins so nice to use. Like, I can pre-stack these talismans so I don't have to come back here later and do this bullshit again. And that's all four monkey talismans, just like that. I spent 40 years splashing and every time I almost killed it, the gnomes would take the kill. So I'm gonna try it with ranged. And I can definitely confirm that range was so much better to use. Let's go finish this. That is Monkey Madness 1 completed. 10,000 coins and a bunch of combat XP we have to go claim. I think if I take attack and defense it gives me more level ups. So that is a huge XP drop of 110,000 XP. 47 to 51 attack, 47 to 49 hit points, 49 to 51 strength, and 47 to 50 defense. Absolutely massive. 61 farming coming in, which is a great level because I can now grow my own snape grass for prayer potions. And since I was so close, there's level 51 defense and 50 hit points. Here doing a slayer task for the diary, but there's level 30 slayer. That is level 65 magic coming in. And this is the last level we can get here, but there's level 33 Slayer. And I haven't forgotten that I said I was going to get room gloves this episode, so of course, we're back in the kitchen for 
level 62 cooking. And all the way up to level 71 cooking. Back to recipe for disaster quests. This Evil Dave subquest is like the most annoying one because the low catch rate and also the RNG, like my quest look is hitting me hard. I'm just getting every spice wrong. All right, that is the Evil Dave subquest completed. And just for good measure, the mystery box I saved, it's an onion. And that's the Lumberage Guide subquest complete. And the Ogre one, I mean, Scratch Oglogwi. And the last subquest for Rune Gloves, that is the King Awoogi subquest complete. Before I cut to about 50 bajillion days worth of AFK and crabs, we're starting this video off with level 60 hunter. Here's the loot tracker from 11,322 Ammonite Crabs. Obviously I didn't pick the majority of the stuff up. I mainly tried to pick up the fossils whenever I saw them. And for like the Numalite, I used a Ring of Wealth so it wasn't even tracked properly but it's still interesting to see. Would I recommend doing this? Probably not but uh, you know it, it's what I chose to do during the league. And now that I have the levels required to actually enter the Warriors Guild, let's grind ourselves out a nice Dragon Defender. If you didn't know, you have to get all the defenders consecutively, and the ones up till rune are all a 1 in 50 drop from the upstairs Cyclops, and the Dragon Defender is a 1 in 100 from downstairs, so we might be here a little while, but it's a very, very good upgrade. And after only 6 kills here, Barely even got to stay in the room at all. There is the Bronze Defender. Iron Defender coming in at a total of 43 kills. We are very underrate. And speaking of underrate, literally two kills since the last clip. That's the Steel Defender. Hey, there's the Black Defender coming in at 99 kills. And not too long after the last one, there is the Metal Defender at 130 KC. Hey, I'm definitely glad to be getting a little spooned here, but that's the Adamant Defender at 166 kills. Only one more to go until we move on to the basement. And about time, there's our Rune Defender at 212 kills. Still way under rate, so I'll take it. But let's go get ourselves that dragon one now. Oh, a genie, check this out. Level 50 Herblore. <laughs> nice. Let's go! There's our Dragon Defender coming in at a grand total of 253 kills. So, so spooned. But, we take those. Holy shit guys, it happened. The stale baguette is real. This is an item that I still can't even get on my main account, like, what the hell? Well, believe it or not, we did get the stale baguette before the full beekeeper outfit. That is just unbelievable. Oh yeah, that's the uh, beekeeper's hat. A very nice mine boots and mine top coming in. Still got another four pieces or so to go, I think. But we're slowly inching closer to that green log. I don't have a bee pun for this one. That is the last piece, the beekeeper's top. It's probably not ideal that Slayer is still my lowest skill, but 37 Slayer coming in from our weekly Tears of Gothics. And I'm actually gonna do a couple of Slayer tests just to get a few levels. But there's 38 Slayer. 
39 Slayer. And that's probably enough for now. A nice 40 Slayer. I'm still very broke, but I figured I might as well unlock the Kingdom of Miscellanea. So that is the Throne of Miscellanea quest completed. And that is the sequel quest Royal Trouble quest complete. All right, I have no idea what's going on, but I, I can't actually damage this vampire and neither can the NPC. So I'm just here waiting. Hope for the best, I don't know. There is the In Aid of the Myrkey quest completed. And of course, starting Darkness of Hallowvale for later on. If I'm being honest, I fully expect to die to either Sins of the Father boss, Dragon Slayer 2 boss, or Song of the Elves boss. So come back to this clip eventually whenever I uh, die to one of those. <laughs> this shouldn't be too long of a grind, but I need to get at least 50 smithing, 44 smithing, and a 1475 total. Level 45. 46. Holy shit, I just realized after all that that I haven't been using my goldsmith gauntlets. I've literally been swapping between ice and graceful gloves. Like, my my GP. I think I still have enough cash to get 50, but there is 47 smithing. And that is the big level 50 smithing. And if I haven't mentioned why I needed 50 smithing already, it's for the between a rock quest, which I'm gonna go do now. I think, yeah. Not a bad quest. That is Between Rock completed and level 63 mining, which is a nice little bonus. Horror from the Deep quest complete. Eventually, we may be able to fill up one of these god books, but unlikely for the next eternity. Another quest, Slug Menace completed, and that gets us 57 runecrafting. Not bad. All right, screw it. I'm going to the wilderness for this hard clue. Hopefully this one is at least completable though. And we actually managed to get ourselves the casket. Let's go open this puppy. This is a very important moment on the account where we open our first piece of third age. Psych? For our very first hard clue, that, that's not that great, but uh, it is another collection log slot number 91. This was really awkward to get together as an Iron Man, but uh, that's a scarecrow to complete the easy Mauritania diary. I'll probably end up cutting out most of that run because it was very long, but uh, that is one Barrow's kill count for the mini quest. I do really want to come back here eventually, but without the Barrow's teleport, it's just way too annoying if I'm being honest. And if you didn't know, that mini quest gives us a juicy 20k XP prayer lamp, getting us to level 48 prayer. It was a little bit tedious to get all these lamps, but the very nice side effect of all the crab AFKing was the fossils. So I now get to chain together a ton of Herblore levels. And all the way to level 56 Herblore. Very, very nice. That is the Scorpion Catcher quest finally completed. Strength XP would have been nice early on, but oh well. I was going to complete Eagle's Peak, but this is way more important. Our very first Hesborian in the account is ready to fight. I'm hoping to get either some white lily seeds, since I think that's the only way you can obtain them. But obviously, if I get the bottomless compost bucket, that'll be like, you know, insane. Oh, those two tasks also mean that the easy tier of combat achievements is now complete. And for the Hespori loot, not really what I was hoping for, but not bad overall. There is the easy Falador Diary completed for some more free Herblore experience. I'll take what I can get, honestly, it's really a struggle. Bit of a weird little mini quest, but Skippy and the Mogers mini quest completed. I don't know if I'm gonna do it now or later, but I do wanna get some flippers because I keep walking to the seaweed patches and it's kind of annoying. Still gonna make my way over to Eagle's Peak, I promise, but another little detour for this beginner clue. And it's a one and done. Bam, rip it open. Oh my God, look at him. He's just a little guy, the little, little parrot guy. 
It's a shame that's a cape slot though, because I probably won't even wield this paired after this clip, but uh, yeah, nice drop. Took a lot of detours, and this quest had a lot of little annoying puzzles, but that is Eagle's Peak quest complete. Nifty little quest, making history completed. I think I pointed this out before in another episode, but some more free XP from this cleric. And that's 51 smithing as well. Just like that, there's another easy diary, the desert diary completed. And with the one annoying little climb, there's also the medium desert diary. And that barely got me 57 herb lore, yeesh. I'm gonna give some lazy barb lore a go. If you don't know what that is, uh, basically bank sturgeons for caviar, then use the caviar to make the barbarian mixes for a little supplemental herb lore experience. You can do this more efficiently by catching and mixing as you go, but I'd much rather just bank them and figure it out later. That is a massive level 60 agility coming in. Every level I get not doing real agility is a blessing. Uh, I was not expecting this level from here, but that is 83 strength and an insane 1500 total level. Guys, we're about to hit the funny number again. Level 69 farming. <laughs> another Hespori killed and another collection log. That's not what I was hoping for. I'm here with another birdhouse update and 65 hunter. Only five more levels to go for Song of the Elves. I was recording the wrong screen, but that is the camo hat finally acquired. The game calls it a helmet, but it's a freaking hat. Recording the wrong screen again and almost missed it, but that is the mime mask. And if I'm not mistaken, that completes the random event collection log. Actually insane. It's time for my favorite non-crabbing activity, another Hespori. Some more crappy seeds, but that is level 70 farming in the account. And I didn't bring my seed dipper. Another Hesporia kill coming in for three palm seeds. Okay, that's actually pretty good, I guess. Very important fishing level coming in here because this is the level four sharks. Will I ever actually fish sharks directly? Probably not, but nice. That is the Christmas event completed for a nice party headset, some Santa hats, Christmas crackers, and about 90 bajillion gazillion music tracks, passive event items. All in all, not bad. If I'm being honest, I kind of forgot about the kingdom and it ran out of money, but uh, you know, there's a few herbs and some mahogany logs for planks. Well, I mean, I'm still broke, but uh, you know, eventually I'll use them. That's another Hespori with garbage loot, but at least the 12,000 farming XP drop is nice. Uh, well, I was trying to get a body talisman, but that's a medium clue, so let's go do it. And after 76 guard kills, there's a body talisman. What the hell? Easy casket obtained and a beginner casket. Let's go to the bank and I'll yoink these open. That's not ideal. That's some garbage. And yoink the ranger boot. Never mind. It's it's to be expected. All right, fellas, peep the fit. Very scuffed setup. We're killing the crazy archaeologist in the wilderness, which has a 1 in 25.6 chance to drop two rune crossbows. All right, well, by, I was prepared to stay here for ages going dry and potentially dying to a PK, but uh, literally that is two kill counts. And we have ourselves a nice rune crossbow. I'm getting the fuck out of the wilderness. Once again, we're at the funny number, level 69 mining. Nice. We're gonna be heading over to the Mothload Mine for the next eight bajillion hours until we complete the full prospector set. But first, let's bust out 72 mining at stars real quick for that upper level later on. Hey, not only did we hit 72 mining, but that's also 1550 total level. Very nice. Let's go complete these clues and hopefully get spooned on something nice. Quick beginner, easy and medium caskets to open. All right, five sardines is not gonna cut it. I do like the purple sweets though. Those are kind of fun to stack. And a double ancient item drop. I mean, I I don't know if I really need either of these, but I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to get some more clogs. Ah, 
<sighs> That's another collection log from Miss Bori. That's not the bottomless compost bucket. Oh well, what can you do? At least we got some more white lily seeds. Even though I only, I planted one of those in like every spot and I, I don't need all these extra seeds, but just in case, you never know. Since I don't have a mithril grapple yet, this might be one of the worst possible clue steps I could have gotten. We've got ourselves a long walk. Maybe even a walk so long we'll be deserving some ranger boots, eh? All right, finally got some more clues done. Show me some green jagex, preferably in the form of boots, of course. Okay, an ancient robe top is kind of cool, I guess. And I do already have another vestment piece, so uh, that's all right. And that's the wrong kind of green, but you know, at least we got something again. Not bad. I think I forgot to record an introduction to this place, but for the next several days, we're going to be exclusively living underground down here at the Motherwood Mine. The plan is to, at the very least, get the full prospector set. I'd also like to get the gym bag and coal bag if I can stomach it. But for now, we work toward our first 100 golden nuggets in the upstairs level. Oh, this is a very important genie lamp, which you think I'd be putting in the hair blower like I have been. But this is going to actually get us level 49 prayer. Maybe one day this redemption prayer will save our hardcore status. Who knows? I don't think I'm going to use every level up clip, but we're already at level 74 mining. Still quite a long ways to go in here. By the way, guys, don't sleep on these random events once you have all the collection log slots, especially the Freaky Forester, because this event is like 10 seconds for a free XP lamp. With this sack, I will have gotten... Wait, I thought that was the 100 nuggets. Hold on a minute. Okay, guys, with this nugget here, I have finally achieved 100 golden nuggets. And we are, of course, buying access to the upper level mine. We are officially gaming now. Yo, that is a seven nugget sack and our new personal best. Whoa, okay, is it just me or is this top level giving me absolute banking nuggets? Like, geez, where were all these whenever I was down in the lower level slaving away? That is level 75 mining and I can now mine Ancient Essence, which today I learned you could even mine in the first place. I thought it was a must drop exclusively, but I guess you learn something new every day. We're about to hit our first six hour nerd log of the grind. Honestly, this place isn't as bad as I remembered, but I still gotta hand it to Shooting Stars for making the skill a hundred times more bearable. Another mining level in the grind, that's level 76 mining. Honestly, I wonder what level we'll even reach by the time I get all the rewards from this place. Wait, where the hell did the Prospector guy go? He's he's not here. I relogged and I don't have Entity Hider on. It's not the skin. Is he on lunch break? Like, hello? Okay, I relogged again, and he's here now. That was kind of weird. Anyways, here's our first piece of the Prospector outfit, the jacket. We only have three more pieces to go. I don't know if I care about getting the coal bag at this point, but I definitely would like to get the gym bag. So there's still quite a bit of grinding to go. Finally, another seven nugget sack. The last two sacks have been zero nuggets and two nuggets. So thank God. Honestly, this place is like up and down, and I'm, I'm just like, me when I go to McDonald's, like I'm down bad for some nuggets. Give me, give me them nuggets, bro, please. And a great way to start off our day here, finally picking up ourselves the Prospector pants. Very important fit check, guys. I got the mole slippies on and I'm actually getting use out of Perry the Shoulder Parrot. Sheesh. Whoa there, pal, you've had a posture check. You better not be shrimping in that chair of yours. Cause I know I sure as fucking. Anyways, um, 77 mining, I'm, so happy you could probably tell by the sound of my voice <laughs> i want to be free unless i get unlucky this sack should give me just enough nuggets for our next outfit piece okay a six nuggeter is even better and there's our snazzy prospector helmet and if we do end up going for the coal bag as well there is another 226 nuggets to go oh boy it's only been a couple hours since the last clip since these boots are only 30 nuggets, but we are now saying goodbye to the mole slippies and hello to our prospector boots. And with that, we have now completed the full set. Funnily enough, the base prospector outfit does match the 99 mining cape better, but I do plan on recoloring it soon just because I can. As for the eventual mining drip, it's not 100% set in stone yet. Right now I am thinking of using the prospector helmet since it fits the theme quite well, but not the outfit since it's a little bit of a cop out, but uh, you know, we'll see. 99 mining, of course, is still quite some time away. And obviously, if you have a suggestion for an outfit, feel free to let me know. I do have a couple that are already set in stone, 
and there's a couple that I was planning on clue items and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm realistically going to even get those clue items, so I might do something else, like, eh, it's a balancing act. You know, it's crazy to me that a skill I pretty much hated is already such a high level, but we're absolutely cranking this XP out. I didn't think it would actually be done without upgrading the sack, of course, but we hit a new record of 8 nuggets. We'll be done in no time. Another day, another motherload dollar. I don't know, I'm just here to buy another item. We finally have ourselves a very nice gym bag. And I've decided officially right here, right now, let's just go for the coal bag as well. Then I can just never come back here. Ever. Probably, hopefully, I don't know. I, I don't want to come back here. Never thought I'd be excited by a mining level unlock, but with 80 mining, we now have access to tier 8 shooting stars. Which means my go-to AFK editing activity is now 5% better. <laughs> nice. It feels like only yesterday we got a new sack PB. Well, I think it might have been the day before actually, but a massive 9 nugget sack. It's really the little things in life that keep you sane here. Oh my god, finally the coal bag. Not only is that another green collection log slot, I'm also free from this place forever, I think. Ah, it feels good to finally not only be on the surface after so long, but to be doing some more juicy, juicy clue scrolls. You know, I'm, I might actually be a clue scroll addict. Oh well. I'll see you when we complete the final step. Just gonna rip these suckers open right here in the mines. Honestly, kind of a fitting place to open a clue scroll after everything I've done this episode, but... Damn, that was awful. Well, I mean, at least we got one log out of that. See, these wilderness clues, I don't mind that much. But the ones that are like 40 million years from any valid escape route, or a three minute travel south to teleport to safety, I, I mean, those are just... I hate those. I, I, those are the ones that I like debate dropping or not. Like, I just want to get some clue scroll loot, man. Like, I don't want to go into 52 wilderness and die. Dang, that clue is actually completable, but I don't have GP and I also can't get to Port Tyrus to buy a halberd. I'm going to save it for later, but here's the other two clue scrolls I have. So you're not left hanging at least. You know what? That's actually kind of cool. I I might use that. Nice. After a lot of thinking, I decided it's time to stop looking like a generic clone and grind ourselves out the speedrunning graceful recolor. I know, I know. You got so attached to that ugly default graceful. I did too, but we just gotta move on. Alright, I'm gonna do these quests mostly blind. I mean, I have done the quest before, obviously, but I don't know if there are any fancy speedrunner strats or anything like that. If I end up failing these a lot, I'll probably just look them up, but let's do this thing. First try on the cook's assistant, and we absolutely smashed that platinum time. And speaking of smashing, while you're here, how about you scroll down and smash those fingers across the keyboard and leave me a comment. It can be about literally anything. I don't care. I just enjoy reading them. I bet you thought I was going to say smash that like and subscribe button, huh? Nah, nah, nah. That's too easy. Ugh. <sighs> Only gold time? I, I don't want to do that again, and I don't even know how I'd complete that faster. I guess if I get stuck I might come back to this one, but we're moving on to the next. Okay, that one was super easy. I don't feel like my hits were that crazy, but maybe it's because I knew to buy a goblin paint cannon thing. Anyways, a dub is a dub. We take those. I mean, I gotta be missing something obvious here. The basement gates were awkward, yeah, but like, I ran out of run energy. Ugh. I don't really want to redo that, but I don't think silver is good enough. Okay, for the record, the trick was to do it in a slightly different order than the quest helper plugin. And one big thing that I totally forgot about, just drop the spade and you get less run drain. So like, that was much easier and another pretty much free platinum trophy time. Aha, I just learned this. Drop all the armor. I'm a genius. I might actually make this time. Alright, well I didn't quite make the diamond time, but that's another really easy first try platinum trophy. Unfortunately, we're now at the point where we have to do some of the quests that take a lot longer per attempt. 
Hopefully there's at least another one or two easy ones and then we're done here. All right, Prince Alley Rescue made my noggin hurt, but somehow that's the gold time for it. Took me 11 and a half minutes though, so I'm not redoing that for a better time. Can't tell if the timer is running down during the cutscenes or not. I think it is, but if this little guy would hobble out a little faster, we should have the platinum time. And we do. Only took about two hours total, and we are already done. Let's go grab our new graceful. Of course, there are some other things in the shop, but I don't really want to do more quest speed runs. The stopwatch looks kind of cool, I guess, but more importantly, the tier three adventures outfit is now mine. And as an added bonus, at least if I'm not mistaken, I can freely take this off and get the default graceful back later on if I decide I want another recolor. And of course, our new go-to running around the game fit check. In my opinion, it looks much better than the default clone graceful, and it'll look even nicer when we finally get ourselves the quest cape. We have an absolutely massive list of chores to get done this episode. A lot of those chores are quests, of course, but I plan on being fully ready to PVM by next episode. Strap in, we're gonna get this party started with Zogre Flesh Eaters. I want to complete this quest, or at least get far enough so I can kill a Zogre for the bone, so we can go do Dragon Ball Man 2 and get some of our precious bank space back. Oh my god, there's already a wrench in the plans because this isn't the right freaking Ogre Bow! Alright, I had to come all the way here to Lumbridge to string this flax but finally the right type of ogre bow. Jeez. These arrows are not the easiest to make, but that is 120 brutal arrows. Hopefully that's enough for the boss fight and a couple zogers. I might just kill the zoger here and hope for the bone. We'll see. All right, well, I got the bone first try, so let's detour for Dragon and Bone Man 2 real quick. We'll come back to this later, I promise. This is not going to be foreshadowing that I forget the quest, like, trust me. There's the bat wing and the zombie bone. Moss giants, more like dead giants. <laughs> Give me that bone. Cheeky little mogra bone first kill, but while we're here, let's try and get those missed collection log items. That is the mud skipper hat after only 24 kills, almost exactly on raid actually. Honestly, this hat is really ugly, but, you know, I kind of like it. Well, that is definitely not one of the clogs I was expecting to get from him. A curved bone from a moker, which is a 1 in 5,013 drop. Sheesh. I just wanted the flippers, man. You hate to see it. That is hat number two at 41 kills. Still under drop rate for the flippers though, so it's not a problem. Okay, who in the hell is buying the full stock of fishing explosives in like every single world and why? Like, how many mogers and kraken are you trying to kill? I hope this isn't a sign for me later, I don't know. Funny little fish hat number three at an even 100 kills. We are getting quite a bit dry on the flippers, but you know, RNG gonna RNG. There we go, finally got the flippers at 125 kills just under two times the drop rate. Not too bad. Of course, these flippies aren't gonna replace the mole slippies, but I will get some use out of them when I do my seaweed runs. Back on the bone quest for the bone guy with this here, Joger Bone. Quite a few basilisk kills for this bone, but you know, not bad. And of course, if getting all those bones wasn't already enough of an annoyance, now we have to prep all the pots with vinegar and go cook them all. But just think about all this nice bank space I'll be getting back. Thankfully, you can speed this up slightly by world hopping for each bone, but it still sucks. I didn't really think about the quest reward, but you can take both cosmetics now, so yoink. Anyways, that is the Rag and Bone Man 2 quest finally completed, and like 25 bank spaces for you back up. Oh, and this is what those bone cosmetics look like. In my opinion, the bone stack is a lot cooler, but they're both pretty mid, if I'm being honest. I'm a little bit nervous doing this quest since I remember it nearly clapping my cheeks the last time I did it, but I figured with the questing theme this episode, what better time to get another new Biss upgrade? 
So see y'all when I get to the trolls, I guess. Just realize I'm not even recording. <laughs> Whoopsie. Thankfully, we haven't quite made it to the boss fight just yet. And I still have enough food in my inventory to feed the entire Nate is not army, so this should be a piece of cake. Or should I say a piece of Karambwan? <laughs> Hey, if Jagmix is going to redo the decapitation bit, it's only fair that I get to redo my joke. <clears throat> and finally, yet again, some more RuneScape head. <laughs> Still got it. Fermanic Isles quest complete, and our new best in slot melee helm for a very long time. The Helm of Nate is Not, a certified RuneScape classic. One small favor quest completed. I've slowly completed the steps of this quest over a very long period, probably five episodes ago. I don't even really know, but it isn't that bad. I do see why most people hate this quest though. Anyways, this nifty little key ring saves us some more bank space, so not a bad quest reward. This is not a very important herb lore level or anything, but I just wanted to say that so far as an Iron Man, herb lore is the worst skill. I don't want to say by far because obviously I haven't done all of them to 99 yet, but I there is literally no good way of training Herblore right now other than just waiting for random herbs here and there or doing herb runs. Like, I hate it. I got an absolute ton of gold ore from doing the Motherload Mine, so very quickly I'm just going to casually smelt it here in Edgeville since it's pretty much AFK. There is 61 smithing and a very nice total level of 1575. The most important smithing level was a few levels ago, but you'll see why in just a little bit. Wasn't sure exactly what point I wanted to spend my stardust on the recolor, but here we are, just gonna rip it now. And I'm also gonna buy some gems for a little bit of crafting XP. We're still locked out of completing our hard clue, but I got another triple decker combo to open up here. Hey, always rewarded. You love to see it. Not even gonna lie, it took me four trips to successfully make lava runes for the diary task. In the end, we managed to get it done though, and hopefully the next clip will be when I finally finish the medium lumberage diary. And this is what that smithing level was for, a mithril grapple, so we can now finally complete the medium lumberage diary. Being a little bit quirky with this XP lamp and putting it on Slayer instead of Herblore, Hopefully I can reach about level 50 from a couple lamps and we can start doing Slayer with real tasks like Blood Belts, which aren't really much of a real Slayer task, I don't think, but you know, better than otherworldly creatures, am I right? I don't even know what the last clip of this video was at this point, but wouldn't you know it, I'm back yet again with the triple casket stack. One of these days I'm going to actually pull the ranger boots and you don't know which clip it's going to be. So if you're not actually watching these medium clue caskets, one day you're just going to see me wearing ranger boots and be like, damn, where'd those come from? And they came from right here, literally this casket. Okay, well that is a green collection log item, but it is not the ranger boots. Fortunately, I still am using green dehydes, so new drip. Nice. Medium Ardoin diary completed, and another juicy lamp, which brings us to level 49 Slayer. Alright, you want to know my contender for the worst quest in the game? This one. It's, it's rat catchers. It's got to be rat catchers. I mean, this quest is awful. I mean, admittedly, they did fix the guards being out of sync, but like, brother, I am not making it past these. About damn time. That is the Rat Catcher's quest complete. This is the, I think, fifth time I've done this quest in some form, and I swear every time I have to do this quest, it just gets worse. Oh yeah, I about forgot why I did that. Uh, completing Rat Catchers also means I completed the Medium Falador Diary along the way. So the quest sucked, but I do now have a final Slayer XP lamp. 
which, if I can do some simple math, means we get level 50 Slayer. Very nice. A nice even 10 Hesporia kill count. Show me the money. I said show me the money, not show me the toad flags. Another hard Varrock task down and another bajillion to go. Will I complete this? Probably not anytime soon. I forgot to press record, but we're here finally starting one of the big boy quests. Of course, I'm talking about the Legends quest. It shouldn't be too difficult considering how high my hit points level is already, but let's get this sucker done. My inventory is absolutely packed to the brim, but I want to minimize trips to the bank as much as possible because it's really annoying to get out here all the way through the jungle. Funny little thing, it says here, lockpick, multiple in case they break. Oh no, please. Ah, <sighs> we made it. That's a hard Karam Jadairi task to kill that bat. To be honest, I still haven't gotten a gout tuber for the medium diary, but I definitely don't want to come back here just for a diary task, so it's off the list and forgotten about. Nothing to see here, just a couple of best buds oming in the middle of the jungle. Just in case that first time through was really lucky, I did bring two lockpicks. Okay, I did fail, I think, but it didn't break my lockpick, so that was kind of weird. A 34 from climbing that rock and failing? Are you kidding me? I mean, I still have food, but like, that could have easily killed me coming back through here later on and not knowing about that. The water is right there. Just grab it. Like, just, just scoop the bowl in the river thing. Like, grab the water. All right, time to finally kill this demon one last time. This is what I've been waiting for. Just gotta make sure I don't mess this up, of course. I would like to put this XP into prayer since I don't like training it as a hardcore Iron Man, but I just can't pass up this juicy herb war experience. We're starting at level 58 and ending up all the way at level 62 herb lore. Oh yeah, there's the actual banner. That is the Legends quest completed. We can also buy ourselves the Legends cape, which I don't have money for, but uh, you know, I'll be right back. Legends guild member approaching. Feels good, man. Not that I'll ever even come back here hardly at all, but uh, you know, it's nice. There is our classic Legends cape. Looking good. It is worse than the fire making cape, of course, so I probably won't go out of my way to actually use it instead of that, but it is nice to have, and it actually fits the speedrun and graceful look quite well. All right, well, we're done here. It's now time to finally go finish recipe for disaster and get ourselves those coveted Barrows gloves. Boys, I was looking at the requirements for this quest. Not only did I forget to grab a vanilla pod while I was in the middle of the jungle, I, uh, I turned all my Draymond branches into staves for the bank space a while back, so one sad detour to Entrana for me. If I remember, I'll throw the clip from a few episodes ago, but I won't lose these branches this time, I swear. And although I shouldn't need more than just a couple of branches, I'm gonna just go ahead and get a whole inventory of them. Rest in peace, Trout. I didn't need you, but you served me well. Okay, the quest helper plugin told me to kill the evil chicken first, and I didn't really read that, but thankfully I still got this dragon token, because that dragon kill took way too long. Really annoying to run all the way back here for the vanilla pod when I was just here, but it is what it is. And that is the last sub-quest finally completed, and now we just have ourselves a bunch of quirky boss fights to deal with. I don't know what's going on with my mage setup, but it is really bad. You know, I don't like how this guy will hit nothing and then just slap a 25 out of nowhere, but other than that, this is actually a really easy fight.
It feels really good to say this, but recipe for disaster quest fully completed. A nice XP lamp for 20k XP and full chest access. Real quick, I am using this XP lamp on Herblore, of course, to get level 63, which means I cannot make super restore potions. That's actually a really nice unlock, but the problem is still the amount of snapdragons, which, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be loaded with them, but for now, I don't even have enough to do anything with. Oh, and of course, I haven't forgotten, we can now finally buy ourselves a nice pair of Barrow's Gloves, which, if you didn't know, are actually the second best in slot for all three combat styles, and realistically, we'll be using these for a very, very long time. Compared to our previous pair of Rune Gloves, it is pretty much just plus four across the board in every stat. Truly a massive upgrade. And since I won't be needing these anymore, I can just alk them for a whopping 3,000 coins back. Unfortunately, we are back to being turbo broke with a tiny little stack of 7,277 coins. I really need to figure that out. Hespori kill number 11, but more importantly, 73 farming, which means I can grow lantodimes. Very cool. I only have like two lantodime seeds. Maybe one day I'll be able to use those in my air blower skill too. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I didn't really feel like going through the wilderness and making battle stabs again, and I do need to get my thieving up at some point, so for now, I'm gonna just sit here until I get about 200k. Hopefully by the time you hear from me again, my fingers are still functional. There is 63 thieving, and a nice cash stack of 181k, which is good enough for now. The two big goals are a rune plate body and a rune halberd for my hard clue which I also need to do the regicide quest to even buy that, so that's uh, probably what I'll do now. As much as I hate having to go through that damn underground pass again. No shot, I'm still falling here, man. Give me a break. Oh, I was supposed to wait back here. Hello? Uh, it appears that I have broken a quest yet again. Oh no. Okay, I world hopped and we're fine. And all that for them to get smoked anyways. Okay, buddy. Nice metallic armor, bozo. 220 GP, holy, gimme that. These Tyrus guards out here getting paid bank. Still doing the quest, of course, but we have made it to the Tyrus camp part, which means I can actually go ahead and buy ourselves that rune halberd. The links I go for clue steps, man. Jeez, this better pay off. I'm glad we're so broke, because I almost bought that entire stock, but that is one very overpriced rune plate body. And regicide quest complete. I'm very glad to be done with the underground pass part of the game. It is a very interesting area, to be fair, but failing one obstacle out of 300 and then having to walk back for eight minutes just isn't my cup of tea. Now let's go complete ourselves that hard clue. Okay, not the casket, but it is a doable step, so I guess I can't complain. And the moment of truth, was all of that detouring really worth it? Mmm... The black dehyd body is worth it, I suppose. That is a really pathetic clue otherwise, though, I will say. Damn, this is a new one for me, but a back-to-back -back god egg from a birdhouse run. I don't even think I've gotten a single one from a birdhouse yet, so kinda insane. On the road to the evil chicken outfit for sure, jeez, maybe another six years. The clue tracker is cut off by the quest helper box, but to complete this elite clue step I have to complete the roving elves quest, so I guess that's what I'm doing now. A really fitting sequel to what we just went through I must say. You can kind of tell by the chat box, but I had to world hop over 20 times to find a world where this elf was actually here. Gotta be one of my least favorite quest starts, for sure. Now's not the time, man. How the hell did you even get in here? And of course it's for an onion, of course. Why, why wouldn't it be an onion? <sighs> that is the Roving Elves quest completed. I took the bow since I'm not really sure I'll use the shield at all, but we got a free teleport to town, so let's go do this elite clue. Buddy just kept talking and talking, but too long didn't care version. I started mornings in part one, 
which I'll be putting off for as long as possible, maybe until I have all the requirements for Song of the Elves minus the agility, because there is XP reward for that. But I dread having to do those horrible agility shortcuts and those light puzzles like, oh no, I don't want to. Oh no, a Sherlock step, this might be really bad. Plant a watermelon seed? Hell yeah, I do that all the time, let's go. Okay, back to the elf lands again. This place is super annoying to get to. I just have to pay a charter fee of like $8 billion, but I can get there, which is what's important, I suppose. That's just a kick in the teeth at this point, but I guess it's not the worst wilderness step location. I'd still rather not be going to the wilderness though, but uh, you know, let's go do it. It's real. I can't even believe it. Let's go open this thing. I just got goosebumps from how shit that reward is, and I can't even out these either because I'd need them from another clue step. God dang it, Jagex. I'm gonna be honest, most of the beginner clues are being cut out at this point, and I genuinely am sick of doing these. I've gotten what I wanted for them for the most part, but I just don't want to give up on the dang clogs, man. I'm not sure when I even completed the easy combat achievements, but I'm over here to claim these rewards and a cheeky little 50 prayer from the lamp. Nice. Oh, and if you are wondering why I have the quest helper for troll romance on, I, uh, I got another clue step that I can't do. And this one requires a music track from the mountaintop. So time to bust this one out real fast. That is the troll romance quest complete. Not the greatest of rewards, but Agility XP is Agility XP. Okay, an enchanted hat is... You know what? That's actually sick because I haven't even bought Mystic yet. So that's just a straight upgrade and a nice money saver. And coincidentally enough, I have another Hespori ready to kill. So let's continue that good clue luck. Nope. Got more SpongeBob houses. Gosh darn it. I've been putting this one off for quite some time since the step I got was in the middle of the wilderness lava maze, but I think it's finally time to get this mini quest done. I swear if I see somebody here, I'm probably just going to die in real life and the game. Okay, this guy scared me, but he is wearing PVM gear. Oh my god, what the hell? I'm so glad I was spamming, dude. Imagine if that's how I died, I just get nuked by the King Black Dragon. One, two, I skipped a few ghosts. Um, we're done. I got the ghostly robes. Um, I have no plans on using these for anything, but they are quite cool. Wouldn't this be a sick hell puppy transmog? Like, I want a freaking ghost dog, dude. That would be sick. Okay, that is the sequel to that last mini quest. The general shadow completed. Nice little shadow sword, but mainly just a requirement for a later quest. 85 mining, we can now mine ourselves runite, which uh, let's be honest, I think the only ones manually mining runite ore are bots, but the kid me would be super stoked by this level. I headed back to Temporos to get these spirit angler boots out the way. Probably another three hour grind or so, but see y'all when I'm done. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, this 25 soaked page drop means I just got a duplicate fishing barrel, which kind of sucks. I don't really have use for these pages. I mean, maybe I'll get the tome one point, but I don't even really have a use for that either. And you know, fun fact, my main account still doesn't have a fishing barrel, so I don't know how to feel about that. Hey, that wasn't really that bad. That is the last piece of the Spirit Angler outfit, the boots. Originally I skipped these because I was kind of lazy and I didn't think the boots were like that noticeable, but honestly, it just felt wrong to not have the matching boots, so now we are complete. We already got a duplicate clue step for the rune halberd that we spent all that time getting. Feels good. And the hard loot. Unfortunately, no uniques this time, but I did get elks that I can elk, so poggers, I actually get some money. Quick little easy casket coming in. And another trimmed wizard hat. I'm... Not sure if I'll ever wear this, but another hat to my collection. I think this might be the worst easy casket I've ever seen in my life. I can't get this freaking impling and I want it. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need it. I even brought my main account over here and I'm still struggling. Just come here. And that was definitely the worst impling I've ever experienced. But we did get ourselves a nice little room square shield for 23k! Woohoo! Nice. 
I do not know how that was my PB Hesporia time. That was a terrible kill. And once again, proving that scuffed equals stuff. A bottomless compost bucket. Okay. Um, well, that's awesome. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting to actually get that so soon. I'll probably still be killing Hesporia because that XP is super nice, but, uh, you know, now I can double my Ultra Compost, which is very nice. If I'm being honest, though, I, um, I, I'm not even farming. I'm literally just doing contracts every day or something, and then that's it. I haven't done a tree run since, like, level 30. This will probably be the last grind of the video, but I am feeling a little crazy after all, so hopefully the last time I'll have to see this miserable place. I knew I was doing the more relaxed 20 crop method, but it has come to my attention that uh, I've been doing an entire extra lap to water the crops when I could have just been watering right after I plant them. So yeah, I've been making this place go by even slower. <laughs> That is a big old level 75 farming. I can now grow my own magic trees. Actually huge, except for the fact of, you know, actually getting the magic seeds, which, you know, I'm noticing is a reoccurring problem. Oh well. I didn't think I would even have the mental fortitude. Yeah, I'm saying it. The mental fortitude to get this done in one go. But I finally earned enough points for an herb sack. Let's go buy this damn thing and get out of here. And there it is, our very own herb sack. To be honest, this thing isn't necessary for Slayer by any means, but it is pretty nice to have. Especially on an Iron Man, considering herbs are like gold around here. But like, real life gold? Because RuneScape gold is kind of worthless, but the deed is done and I hopefully won't have to come back here ever again. Before the new rat boss comes out, I want to do a little bit of Slayer for some extra cash to work with, just in case I need to buy anything. At some point I'll be coming back to this to unlock broad bolts, but for now I'm aiming for 52 Slayer to get my hands on a very important item for my medium clues. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, our current task is trolls, which we'll be exterminating up here at the Death Plateau. Nice little Renarcy, don't mind if I do. There's 51 Slayer already, probably only another good task to go, but uh, for now, just keep going the trolls. That is task complete, and hopefully the next one we get will be a little bit better than that. Hey, Blood Belt is perfect. I literally just got the level to fight these last episode. Fifty-two Slayer. I can now move over to Warp Jellies, which I'll be killing until I get a pair of Metal Boots. Not gonna interrupt for every rune drop I get, but hopefully I can get a couple of these and make a quick buck. I almost missed that because I was AFK, but that is the Mithril Boots coming in at a very early on 28 kill count. I can now go finish up that medium clue I have, and we can get on with the ratting. That's another unique item from my clue scroll. Not a very good one, but we take those. Just wanted to slide this clip in here to let you know that the bottomless compost bucket we got last episode is actually getting used. As much as I don't want to be doing these farm runs, it is very nice to have. It is officially time for Scurrius, the Rat King. Right now, the main goal is to just try it out, of course, but I do want to get a ton of kills if this is actually a good XP per hour training method. I'm not sure what style to bring yet, but I'll be using magic for now since it is my lowest level and that's what I'd like to get up.
was a very scuffed first kill. I knew I was a bit rusty, but like, damn, these little tiny rats got hands. They hit hard. And all that for a rune arrow drop, which I guess is not that bad. A rune chain buddy, though, is much, much better of a drop. I am going to go switch to melee to see how that works, though, because I'm absolutely blasting through my stack of death runes. That is a big old level 86 strength coming in from the Rat King. So far, melee is much better to use, but that is probably just due to my melee stats being so much higher. I've been here slaying this rat for quite some time now. Well, I mean, you can see the timer down there, just under two hours already, but I still have yet to see a single rat spawn. Not sure what the drop rate on those are yet. By the time this video comes out, I'll probably know and just throw it up on the screen, but until we get one, we keep grinding. Literally one kill after the last clip. I guess a little complaining is really all it takes. But that is our first scurious rat spawn at 33 kills. I think I'll make the rat bun mace first, assuming I can actually get my hands on a rune one from the shop. I started manually hopping through the total level worlds, so it stopped showing in chat, but I can tell you that was about a 10 minute detour, but let's go make this bad boy. That is the first of three wet. <laughs> Why can't I say rat? Okay. That is the first of three rat weapons, the bone mace. It doesn't currently show the stat differences, but I can tell you that it gets a plus 10 max hit against rats, so this should be a massive DPS increase. And another bonus of this mace is that I can one tick all these little rats now, so that should speed up the XP per hour here quite a bit. That is another spine. I'm gonna finish this trip out and then go make the staff, I think. Just look at all these rune drops though. Oh man, I'm rich. You know, I don't know if this is actually worth it or not, but I'm gonna spend some of this GP on Mystic so we can upgrade our mage setup just a little bit. I'm gonna try a trip using the miter for the extra prayer bonus, but let's go give this rat the cheese touch. Okay, I can confidently say the setup definitely feels way better than using the Ibman staff, but now instead of burning through death runes, I'm just using chaos runes, which doesn't really feel good. Oh yeah, look at all this GP coming in. <laughs> nice. I switched over to using melee with the proselyte armor, and I, I think this is definitely the way to go. Even with my low prayer level, this extra bonus means that... If I bring one or even zero prayer pots per trip, if I flick everything, I, I'm good. I don't even need supplies, especially with these stinky rotten food piles every 10 minutes. Yummy. It's about time. There is finally our third rat spine dropped. Let's go test out that bow now. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. The bow is fine, but just like with the mage setup, I'm just burning through a lot of rune arrows. So I feel like it's much more cost effective for me to just keep meleeing it. Especially now with the proselyte method, because it's so much less prayer usage too, like it's just free money. That is the big kill number 100 for a very expensive, very fancy cooked tuna drop. Yeah, 50% of the time the drops are garbage, but I mean, it's still pretty good to me. I'd much rather be doing this than pickpocketing for GP again, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Oh my god, no way, not again, dude. I honestly, guys, I know what season two is gonna be like. I'm season two is gonna be a pet quest for sure. My hardcore Iron Man has like at least quintuple the luck of my main account. Like, I don't know what's going on here. <sighs> I don't even know what to do now, honestly. I was planning on killing this rat a crazy amount, but like, I'm already done. That's it. 
I guess I could go turn in my extra spawn for a lamp and get this hit points level since I'm so close, but right now I'm just stunlocked. Nice little prayer lamp for the spawn, getting us 51 prayer and 85 hit points along with 102 combat. We are officially done here. I might come back at some point if I'm super down bad for GP, but eh, screw this place. I'll never come back. Out here clue hunting with my little rat child. Got ourselves a nice scenic view to open this, this medium clue. You know, just in case RNG wants to make this like the craziest spoon in my life. Damn, okay, it'd be like that though, for real. That's, that's bad. Alright boys, I'm not gonna lie, I've become a bit of a clue scroll addict lately. I don't have a super good method of obtaining the clue scrolls, but doing all this AFK star mining, I'm getting a lot. So, this episode is probably just gonna be me doing a bajillion clue scrolls, you know, maybe if I need a requirement I'll do some crazy grind, I'm not sure yet. But, uh, don't worry, I actually am gonna do a bit more bossing, probably by the end of this episode. I'll be visiting Dagonoth Rex and hopefully getting that Berserker Ring, maybe a Dragon Axe too, yeah, I don't know, just see what how the drops go. Oh, yeah, and perfect timing for this clip, I am now level 87 mining. This probably won't be my second 99 on the account, but I am getting a lot of levels just from all the AFKing, because that's what I do when I'm editing and stuff. First easy clue of the episode, can we start off with a banger? Yeah, I don't think that's a banger. Alright. I don't know if I'm even including these Hesporia clips anymore since I already got the bucket, but like, that was the worst kill I've ever gotten. Nearly a two and a half minute kill time and over half of my swordfish. <laughs> And I get a second bucket? Oh my god, what the hell? I'm using up all my RNG before I make it to any good bosses, like please. Last easy casket was garbage, so surely this one's got something better in it. Just kidding, at least I got a nature rune to alk that pickaxe with. <sighs> Unfortunately, I do have two better clues, but this one requires a completed god book, which is uh, probably the worst clue step I've ever seen as an Iron Man. And this hard clue is the death altar, which I'm not going to do mornings in right now, so uh, rip. You guys didn't forget about the good old level 69 hunter. <laughs> nice. We managed to get ourselves a hard clue done this time, so hopefully something nice. Okay, well, you know what? At least it's some alkables. And if that clue wasn't bad enough, I just teleported to the wrong spot. <laughs> I just had a journey probably across the entire map. This was honestly a terrible clue to do, but hopefully rewarded. Rewarded with some depression? What the hell is this? I mean, that could have been a magic short bow. I mean, this is this is a weird clue. I, what, what am I looking at? I don't even know. I'm back with 88 mining, and just to give you some perspective. Also, I don't know if you heard that, but that was my wrist snapping. I don't know why I did that, but uh... It has been two days since the last level. They are really starting to slow down, but you know, keep chugging on. Ah, uh, this is a bummer. I don't, don't have a glory. I, this clue is doable, but I don't know how many more stardust I'd need. And I was wanting to save it too, but I'm already two steps in as well on an elite. Uh, for now, I'll save it and we'll just figure it out later. What the hell? You, you can get a rune kite shield from the quiz random? How rare is that? I just keep doing these in case I get another baguette. Because that's free money to the main. And uh, I'm out of bonds and money because I'm just living at the redwood tree trying to get a beaver still. Surely this easy casket by this rat pit is the way to go. Okay. Okay, two uniques. A beanie. And an amulet of magic trimmed, which is actually sick. I actually think that's cool. <laughs> Tell me this beanie doesn't look like I put a deflated beach ball on my head. It's so ugly. We're back here again with 89 mining. Only one more level until I never get cucked by a star ever again. A nice scenic place to open our medium casket. I mean, it's right where I just dug it up, but, you know, right in front of the sleeping fisherman guy, you know, maybe uh, bring me some good luck. Okay, I mean, he brought me luck, so I can't complain. It did what I wanted it to do. Just, uh, you know, I, did, I don't want a pink skirt particularly, but, you know, it's cool. Out here in the trenches, collecting some Mortmire fungus. But, uh, I got a random event lamp here for 65 Herblore. 
We're only five more levels away till the Song of the Elves requirement. I can clean my Cadenthines now, which is neat. And I can make whatever the hell a uh, Buchu Leaf Potion is. By the way, Mortmire Fungus Review, uh, two out of ten, this place sucks. I have been to six star callouts and not a single one was real. So that was fun, but at least I can AFK now. Jesus. And hang on, this angle sucks. And we're back here with another easy casket. I'm assuming the back to back probably isn't going to happen. These have been pretty poor to me. But here it goes. Okay, that's a weird looking clue. But two purple sweets is two more that I have to my little stack. So, uh, I don't know, cool. Some of you might be tired that I'm just opening each clue as I get it. But I gotta keep that addiction flowing. And just like that, fuel to the fire. My addiction is raging. I love clue scrolls again. And interestingly enough, that is three out of three trimmed wizard hats. Gold trim is definitely my favorite one, but I have them all. So, uh, unmatched wizard fashion potential, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe like magic cape would look good with one of these. I I'm not sure. Here's the beginner clue log, by the way, if you haven't seen all these. I don't even really do these anymore so that's why i don't include them and nine times out of ten they're hot garbage anyways so yeah i've pretty much got what i wanted from here maybe i'll see another item one day but not today that is the <laughs> that is so bad that's, a, that's exactly why i don't even do these anymore totally forgot about this but if you paid for this fairy ring before they changed the Corin stuff uh get your money back free well, not free, because I did pay this 80k in before, but, uh, you know, free 80k back to my stack. Man, I'm really at a struggle with these beginner clues, because I was just sitting here thinking about it, like, damn, I mean, I don't want to just give up on the clogs entirely. But then I get one, and I have to fish if, I have to fish for pike. Like, I, I, who the fuck, who goes, who fishes pike? I didn't even know this was in the game. Alright, I got a whole stack of pike for later, and I've decided, here and now, I'm going to actually save up some of these clues so I don't just spam this video casket by casket. Guys, I'm so close and it happened yet again. I'm cooked by a star. I'm, I'm just let me just let me mine it, please. I don't even want to talk about that last star because it despawned before I even got the level. But uh, here's level 90 mining and I will never be blocked by a star ever again. Oh, and that was a total level of 1625. Very nice. Here's a little clue stack update. Up to six nice little caskets that are just sitting there tempting me to open them. But I will resist, I swear. Alright, this really pains me, but 107k stardust. All on gems. It's time. I've been putting it off, but I just, I don't have a better method. No onyx from that, obviously, because that's super rare. But 7.4 million GP in gems, and now the fun part, I actually have to cut these. I don't know if I'll ever get to cut this many dragon songs in one go again, but this uh, definitely feels a little weird. to the clue scroll wizard, no. We interrupt your regularly scheduled crafting montage to bring you 70 Hunter, which is another Song of the Elves requirement marked off the list. This is it. This is the inventory. A massive 76 crafting, which means I can actually go boost to hit 80 and then make that glory. Woohoo, I'm free. I finally got an actual sucky mushroom, bro. That shit sucky. <laughs> I just don't want to say Sulia up, but yeah, I finally got the mushroom. Now let's go bake ourselves a nice little pie. 
200k? What am I made of money? Like, I'm, I'm destined to be broke at this rate. This clue, like, I keep saying this, but these elite clues better be paying off soon, <laughs> please. I really don't want to burn this pie, so I came up to the Hosidious kitchen. Imagine if I still burn it, though. Okay, whew, that scared me, got me nervous. Yeah, that's right, I'm kind of rich uh, in materials, not money, but I'm not making one, not two. I'm making eight Amulet of Glories, oh my goodness. And not only can I do this clue now, but the Amulet of Glory is better than our current best ranging amulet, the Amulet of Accuracy. All in par with the magic attack accuracy, but better in every other stat than our magic amulet trimmed. And not quite better than the strength amulet in terms of damage bonus, but better in every other way. So overall, a very nice upgrade. Oh no, dude. I've already worked so hard for this elite clue, and now you're telling me I have to go back to the tithe farm to get a hat? No, dude, no, 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 I don't believe it. Alright, well, I do need a Shazian body 5 for the clue, so uh, I'm about to get, I think, 25 more collection log slots. Didia spec for the finish. That is every single Shazian armor piece. Thankfully, I can actually store all the other sets in my house. But uh, now we just gotta go do the tithe farm again. Oh boy. Okay, we're finally done here. And unless I'm forgetting something else, I think this is the actual real last time I'm doing this crap. Oh, hey, a nice little lamp too. Okay, we had another step to do, but thankfully I didn't have to do another long grind for that one. But uh, let's finally go open this clue. Oh, and as an update, I have 17 caskets, which I might just go ahead and open all right now, but we'll see. And the moment of truth was the several days I spent grinding for this clue really worth it. Oh, please. <sighs> that's not, uh, that's not what I wanted to see, really. We have eight beginner, five easy, two medium, and one hard. Hopefully, we pull something good to compensate for that garbage elite clue. <sighs> that sucks. I already have black dehyde bodies, too. I still need the chaps. I guess getting 38 law runes is okay. I mean, I was running low again. Two attempts at ranger boots, though. Oh no, it's not looking good. And time for the easies. <gasps> double item. That's our second double item easy casket of the video. Uh, I don't care for the green elegant shirt really, but the iron plate body trimmed is kind of cool. Yeah, this green elegant makes my character look kind of chunky, so... Don't like it. I like the iron plate body trim though. It's kind of nice looking. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but... Uh... At least all the clues were not in vain, and uh, we've got three more easies to go. Jesus, how much are these purple sweets going for? That's so much money for an easy clue with, like, no items. And the last easy one. Absolutely nada. Now, I saved probably the worst for last. I probably should have done this in the reverse order, but eight beginner clues to speed run open. Yep, much or nothing out of those. That double unique easy clue really carried that opening. I'm at a nice 157 collection log items. I just wish the elite clue actually got something good because that took so long to grind that out. Quickly went and got 60 fletching out of the way, which I believe is our last requirement for the vampire quest line, which I won't be finishing out now. But I do want to get that done soon so we can move on to some hallowed sepulcher agility training. Not gonna lie, the boss fights do kind of scare me though. I went and charged those glories so we can now use them to teleport and also get more gems from mining, but uh, feels kind of wrong to have this low of a stardust stack now. Here's a little cheeky prayer level from Tears of Gothics. We can now use the smite prayer, although I probably won't use that until maybe like Phantom Muspa in a million years. Nice to get out of the way though, because I do hate training 
prayer on a hardcore because I do not want to go to the wilderness altar. That was a very fast easy clue, and I'm just going to go ahead and rip it open right here with my bald homies. <sighs> bald homies, not lucky, okay. 80 fishing coming in. You might be wondering why I'm here fishing, but I'm um, kind of hitting a wall of like, how the hell do I get the rest of the levels I need for Song of the Elves? I mean, Herblore is not coming in right now. I don't feel like doing agility. I'm just like... I guess for now I'm going to keep fishing, and then whenever I have some free time, I'm going to go do Dagonoth Kings like the original plan was. Okay, that is another mystery box with a quite decent reward. And maybe this medium clue is the one. Yo, shout out to this guy. Uh, I don't know if I really want to say Huge Wang, but if you're somehow still watching my channel in like a month from now when this clip gets posted, I like your name, man. It was funny. All right, so a three-step beginner clue, a five-step medium clue, and a six-step hard clue. Surely I'm about to pull like the most crazy items out of this, right? Eh, another double logger for the episode. I don't really know about the boater, but the Gnomish Firelighter is nice because that saves a bunch of bank slots, I think. And the hard casket, just gotta blow it up for good luck. <laughs> Alright, you know what? That's not that great, but four alkable rune items is free money, I'll take it. Oh, uh, so this thing doesn't even take all the fire lighters, it just takes one type? That's... why? That's so bad. I thought I was about to save like six slots, but no. I mean, it doesn't waste an extra slot because I can store one of the types in there that I have, but uh, that's some garbage right there. Alright boys, after, let me check actually one sec, after 11 days worth of clue scroll baloney and mining and fishing and I don't even know what else I did, it is finally time to make that Dagonoth King strip. The plan is to bring my main account so I can actually get to the safe spot for Dagonoth Rex. I mean, I know you can X log it or use another world with somebody already killing it, but I don't really trust doing that on my hardcore. And it would be horrible to just log back in and be dead, so that's the plan. And hopefully, best case scenario, I get a Berserker Ring. And worst case scenario, I will stay here for a bajillion kills until I get at least a drop. I want at least one unique collection loggable pop-up drop. Alright, as you can see, I have my man tribriding the kings down right here. And I'm just going to tag Rex and run to the little corner. Which is already tagged on somebody else, so I'll just kill it. But, uh... Once I clear out the room, my main can screw off back to the beavering, and I'm pretty much safe in this corner until I run out of food or make a horrible mistake, or I guess uh, somebody lures the other kings over here and I have to TP out, I don't know. Hey, I totally forgot about that, but there's level 70 magic coming in. <laughs> that is not the Berserker Ring, but on only six kill count, a Warrior Ring drop. I don't know if I should feel good about that. I mean, it, I, it is a big spoon, and it is an item. That, that is what I wanted, but uh, I don't really want to use a Warrior Ring, really. So hopefully, let's get that Berserker Ring. While wow. this random guy that came in there and killed the, uh, the Prime and Supreme just got an Archer's Ring. That's crazy. That could have been my Archer's Ring. What the hell, man? Nah, I'm just kidding. Congrats to this guy, though. Okay, there's the dragon axe on 12 kill count. That's a little fishy. Two 1 and 128 drops at six kill intervals. So uh, catch me at 18 kills with that berserker ring, I guess. All right, that is kill number 28. And unfortunately, I ran out of food quite a while ago and I haven't gotten a food drop. I will say though, overall, that was actually a super good first trip to DKs. Like, Warrior Ring, Dragon Axe. I mean, damn. And I made these Ruby bracelets, by the way, to Alchem between kills. So I made a pretty decent stack of coins during the trip. Unfortunately though, that was my one and only free daily teleport to Relica. So I guess we're done with DKs for now. That is a very nice 1.3 million GP going to my kingdom. Hopefully, when I check back on this in a few days or so, I'll have a lot of herbs. I was just sitting here thinking, like, Jagex is about to nerf forestry again? 
So like, it might be a really good idea to get these clogs out of the way. <sighs> I just scammed myself out of a bank slot because I need 99 wood cutting to attach this cape pouch. And I also already have enough to buy the lumberjack boots and the log brace. But for the rest of the lumberjack outfit, I'm actually going to go figure out temple trekking and grind it out that way. Okay, so basically here's the problem. I can go from Berg de Rot down, but I can't go back yet because I haven't done the Darkness of Hallowell quest. So uh, as much as I don't really feel like doing this right now, I'm going to crank out this quest so I can grind out the lumberjack outfit. Okay, my minigame teleports on cooldown, so I'm going to quickly do the new Children of the Sun quest while I'm waiting. Okay, that quest was so fast. I still have another seven and a half minutes before I can teleport. I just wanted to get the lumberjack outfit real fast, but uh, here I am just sitting here. Guess I'll just sit here staring at the camera until the transition happens. Any second now. Uh, I'm still here. Okay, any hello transition? Okay, finally, Darkness of Hallowvale quest complete. Nice little 52 construction level up. But more importantly, I can now go do temple trekking, which is not something I ever expected to say out loud. Hey, there's the lumberjack top coming in. And the lumberjack legs. And the last but not least, the lumberjack hat. Here's what the full lumberjack set's looking like. I don't think I'm actually going to wear the parrot when I would cut, but I just brought him out to get some fresh air. But I'm thinking next episode might be time to work toward our second drip of the account. And I obviously didn't have this planned, but I mean, we have the dragon axe drop. We have the full lumberjack outfit already. I mean, we might as well just go and finish out forestry and get 99 woodcutting, right? Alright boys, if you didn't watch the last episode, the plan for this one, very simple. Step one, do an absolute ton of forestry. I'm talking every single item, a bunch of logs so I can buy the outfit later. And then hopefully, whenever I hit 90, move over to Redwoods, crank out 99 woodcutting, go get some form of drip with what little items I actually can achieve as an Iron Man right now. And finally, we gotta keep our clue scroll addiction going, so hopefully this time I won't get a super long elite clue scroll grind, but editor, to the next scene that that's me i'm the editor but like you know transition here i have quite a few logs from kingdom and winter top left over but i have an absolute ton of really not fun logs to get like oak logs so i'll be starting off this forestry grind by going to oak trees right here in sears and then i'll go to willows and maples and then i'll live at use pretty much just go up the level tree level level skill guide i why did i call it a level tree i don't even know Got our first fox event of the video coming in. I think it's important to note that I'm not going to be including all these, but I do have all the items on my main account. Fox whistle I got really early on at 23 events, but the egg took me 397. So hopefully the hardcore keeps up with the nuts RNG and I'll be out of here lickety split. Not gonna lie, I forgot to keep track of how many logs I started with, but uh, you'll probably see in the video. Uh, it's a cheeky little 700 or so oak logs are chopped and time to move on to willows. I was literally tabbed out and I come back and I'm in the middle of a ritual square already. That'd be crazy if this was the pedal gone on the right, Jag Eggs? Uh -huh. Nope. First woodcutting level of the video, we're already level 75. Still a very long way to go, but I can now chop magic trees. Honestly, I don't know if I want to chop magic trees manually or if I want to try and boss for the log drop, but uh, you know, it's a uh, cool, cool unlock, man. Starting the day off with a nice elite clue nest. I'm going to be honest, this better be something I can do. Uh, yeah, I can do that. What did that? Okay, what's the deal with all these elite clue steps that I can't complete? I don't want to do swan song right now. What the hell? 
All right, screw this. I'm throwing this clue in my bank. I'll do it later, probably. I don't want to miss out on too many elite clues, but they're so rare from the trees that it's not a problem. So for now, just pretend you never saw this. I think I forgot to update the willow and the maples, but I'm done with both. Moving on to use and level 76 woodcutting. I'll probably stop doing mining as my AFK activity since I'm going for woodcutting and I could just be AFKing that instead, but 91 mining. I definitely won't be pushing for 99 right now, but only one more level until the very last mining unlock in the game, so that's pretty neat. Dwarf weed level. At some point I'll start holding these clues until I get a lot, but uh, <laughs> not today. Garbage. Alright, am I crazy or are these patches like super dark? And like low res, like, is it always look like this? That is five farming contracts in a row off of my pre-planted patches, so honestly, it's kind of insane. Most of my days I get like one, maybe two max. Okay, I just couldn't tell myself. There's 92 mining, and I can now mine Amethyst, which I've actually never done before. My main account does have the level, but never had a reason to go there. As an Iron Man, should I do Amethyst? Maybe. I don't know. Am I going to still do stars? Probably till 99 at some point. Yes. Fuck mining. Absolute Giga Chad over here cannoning these imps. I'm assuming for the champion scroll, but I'd like to believe he's just desperate for his beads, man. I don't know. About to open a sick pair of ranger boots. Dang it. It's another page for the log, though, so I'll take it. Okay, a black pickaxe. I haven't had one of those yet, so it's another log. I'll, you know, it's pretty good. And a duplicate page. Okay, not bad. Gertrude's gonna give me this casket right here and then bless my medium with the ranger boots. Check it. I am. I mean, this is a cool piece, and a trimmed strength amulet is sick. Like a little, little hammer thing. I fuck with it. I'm begging you, please be something good. Um, I do need one of those for a clue step. And I was missing the black eyed chaps, so that's a good clue. Very nice. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that this is actually a woodcutting episode, not a mining episode. But 93 mining is actually a very important level, which I won't tell you why yet. But you can find out in maybe a month or two. I don't know, but you'll you'll see when I do the 99 mining grind. <sighs> as much as it pains me to ruin my one nice looking bank tab, I really desperately need the bank space. So into the seed vault go all of my seeds. Give or take like a couple herb seeds maybe, but like most of my seeds. Wow, 67 bank spaces that I now get to fill with more random bullshit for my clues. <laughs> nice. Okay, who's dropping 480 coins on the ground at the bank? Come on, man. UIM moment. Back here again for another beginner easy and medium opening. Staying this way so I don't look like I'm trying to steal the coins. I'm an Iron Man after all. You know, I have standards. And standards isn't I, I can't grab. I would take them. If I was a mannequin, I'd take 480 coins. I mean, it's right there. It's at, I'm at the bank. Come on, guys. Obviously, you gotta start with a beginner clue and get absolutely nothing. I didn't even know that was a thing, so cool, I guess. It's another clog. I love love me some clogs. Cloggers. And the medium clue. Bunch of nothing. Ah, oh, it's okay. Okay, back on track to the actual forestry part of the video. I have 50 trap disarmers and 50 padded spoons. Hopefully, I get lucky on one of these and I don't have to make any more. The fox has left you a gift. Yeah, uh, not its whistle, man. I don't, I don't want this shit. Give me the whistle. Womp womp. That was an amazing pheasant. I got 54 feathers from that one event. Where my egg dough? 77 woodcutting coming in. And I realized that there's actually no other unlocks other than Redwoods at 90. So these are going to be some pretty lackluster level ups. And I also don't have anything else to show really because I'm not getting an egg. Not getting a fox whistle. And I'm just sitting here chopping yew trees from a range of like 6 to 30 hours a day, like a psychopath. So, you know, it's great. I'm, I'm not going crazy at all, guys. No, surely. Surely I'm sane. Finally, our first forestry event drop after like a week of chopping these yews. Can I be real for a second? Like, why would you ever use this at all? And why does it not just buff the rabbit foot necklace like weird choice to even have this as an item in my opinion hey there's level 79 woodcutting coming in and i'm still here to use to be fair i don't actually need to have these forestry items but i want them 
if I don't get 99 woodcutting and the green log, what's the point? Like, come on, I want to never woodcut again in my life. Well, I still want to beaver on at least one of my accounts, but that's a, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to think about that yet. Open some more clues that were some hot garbage. So we're here to collect my kingdom. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. That's at least five Herbler XP, maybe even six or seven XP. Like, oh, that's a, whew, that's a, that's a kicker right there. So it turns out that this guy won't make my potions into unfinished ones unless I do the hard desert diary. I found this pretty interesting method after a lot of googling on how to get a lot of ashes for serum 207 potions. But basically in the nightmare zone you set up a practice versus for read and any arrow you shoot at it has a chance to turn into ashes. So you just bring like 30 arrows, shoot it, and then pick up the ashes and then leave. Cost no GP, pretty much no risk of dying, and even if you do it as a safe death I think. And, uh, yeah, it's not bad. I definitely prefer this to, like, picking up ashes and like, the GE or something that's kind of... I mean, I'm not going to call it unethical, but, you know, it just doesn't feel right. It's been a long time coming, but let's go ahead and buy ourselves the Felling Axe handle and make a Dragon Felling Axe. And I have to admit, at least the stance-wise, this looks way cooler than the regular Dragon Axe. Although the downside of this means that I actually have to make rations for it to provide any benefit. But, you know, I just throw some Karambons and some yew leaves together and I eat it. Is that healthy for you? Probably not. But, I, it's cheap. So I'm just going to consider it the RuneScape equivalent of a ramen diet. So, yeah. Back to not getting any items. Huh? What the hell? Who dropping shit? Man, I'm, I could pay, I could grab that. It's 700k. 80 wood cutting. Very cool. It's got a zero after it, so you know it's fancy. Um, yeah, still no whistle, no egg. No bitches. Back to it. Rant time, rant time, rant time. New forestry update? Uh, don't like it. That's it. No, that's not it. I actually have a lot more to say, but basically, forestry pre-update, I'd say like 8 out of 10. Did its job. Kind of liked it. Post-update, 4 out of 10. Kind of bad. Not a fan. Don't really like it as much. It's way worse now for AFK because you miss events. It's way worse socially because you don't have to call out events and you just sit at the same trees because obviously if you leave the trees and you're not in range, you miss the event. And also you don't really need that many people anymore because there's such a delay on events like you're getting four an hour it doesn't matter whether there's one person or 40 people like it what's the point of the forestry world now honestly it's kind of a bad design decision in my opinion and another thing that sucks about the new forestry is exactly like this guy in chat was saying but basically you get few events an hour now and they're never the ones that actually give you the mogs like i, d I don't want to do roots i don't want to do ints I don't want to do bushes, saplings. I I kind of want to do the beehives because I'm I have a plan for all these parts. But basically, if it's not an event that's going to give me an item, I do not care. It wasn't a problem before because you'd get like 35 events an hour if you really wanted to. But now, I get I get four. Like there's an event every 20 minutes, and there's a good chance I AFK and miss it. I would cut 40 hours. And I'll have, I'll have some fucking anima bark. I, I, what am I going to do with anima bark? Eat it? I feel like I did a lot of ranting yesterday, but one more rant today. Um, the spawns in this corner are so bad. Can you just put a dead tree right here and block this whole section off? Like, why, why is this tucked back in? This is stupid. Hey, I don't know if I'm putting all these woodcutting clips in. I don't even know what I'm even putting in this video right now because it's a bunch of fucking nothing happening. Hour after hour, I get zero clip. I'm just here chopping. My log's going up though. Logs is in my stack of you logs, not my collection logs, because I'm not getting any of the items. Yeah. See you at level 82, I guess. Finally got another item. Iron Plate Legs G. Uh, pretty cool. Don't have anything to match that yet, I don't think. But, uh, you know, brain see pop up, brain happy. I lied. We're back with 83 woodcutting because I forgot 82. I could show you the rune light screenshot, but I don't wanna. Still no items. So at this rate, will I even be able to leave here at 90 and go to Redwoods? I don't know. It's not looking good, but I sure hope so. Cause I'm really starting to hate this place. Petal Garland number two, still no whistle, still no egg, yada, yada, so forth and so on. I'm not sure about the drop rates in any of these, but so far it's looking really bad. I gotta say, I skipped 84 to bring you 85 wood cutting because it's got a five after it. And that looks cooler than a four, right guys? I'm going 
crazy. I don't even know how many hours it's been. I've seen nothing but trees. I see trees in my sleep. Help me. <laughs> Kind of slacking on the farm runs because I'm busy treeing, but 80 farming coming in. Five more levels until we can go into the cool part of the farming guild. That is 88 woodcutting coming in. We are scarily close to 90 and still not done with the forestry items, but we do have the egg and we're just looking for the fox whistle. So Jagex, please do not ratio me. Yes, another beginner clue log. It's been so long. Surely this easy will give me something too, right? And it actually did. Wait a second, they match. Wait, 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 wait. That is the same... That's an odd coincidence, okay. Kingdom time. Oh yeah, look at the herbs. I'm almost out of money to put in here, so this might be one of the lasts, but uh, it's getting there. My herb lore is slowly but surely accumulating, and maybe this year I'll have 70. <sighs> There's the 90 woodcutting coming in. Unfortunately, worst case scenario, we still have not gotten the fox whistle. I mean, to be fair, I don't have to get the fox whistle and there is a pretty good chance I won't even get the beaver but like I said before it's a matter of principle so if I have to stay here another level or two or god forbid eight I'm doing it so next clip I will have that freaking whistle I do not care I keep getting spammed for this poachers event but I thought it was too far away because it's up here at the oak trees but Okay, that's uh, that's like poetry. I don't think you can write that. Literally like the last trap in that event that I wasn't even going to do, that I almost completely missed even walking over here. And that's the event that gives me the fox whistle. I mean, okay, sure. All right, just gonna buy ourselves a new pair of Twitchers gloves because the last pair got nuked out of the game when they got updated. And buy the clothes pouch. Unfortunately for the rest of the forestry log, I am missing arctic pine logs and obviously redwood logs, but we'll go and get those soon enough. If y'all remember last episode, I got this cheeky little leak clue scroll. Since I'm going to be cutting so many redwoods and they only drop clue nests, I figured it's only it's only a good idea if I just go ahead and do swan song, get it out of the way, get this leak clue, and very special for you guys this episode, instead of getting each clue opening it like an addicted psychopath and then moving on, I'm actually going to try and save up as many clues as I can and then we'll open them all at the end of my 99 woodcutting grind. Alright, let's go do swan song. There is Swan Song quest complete. No free party hat, but we did get 50,000 fishing XP, 15,000 magic XP, 10,000 prayer XP, 25,000 coins, which is actually not that bad because I'm a bit broke. But more importantly, we could finally go finish this clue scroll. Or continue it rather, because I'm only like one step in. And that gave us a Sherlock step, which uh, might absolutely screw us over. Let's go find out. Oh, uh, that's not the worst step, I guess, but. Uh, nine fletching levels we have to go get. I guess we'll go ahead and uh, figure that out real fast. I'm sure this probably isn't going to be going on by the time this video comes out, but currently you can claim all the past birthday event items here in the Falador party room. So a bunch of goodies and potential for outfits and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there's a bunch of really cool stuff in here, like this 10th anniversary cape, which I think looks really nice, actually. This gnome child mask makes me look like an absolute freak. And of course, one of the actual coolest items in the game, in my opinion, the Cursed Banana, which gives you this uh, nice walk animation. I'm not actually sure what the most cost effective or log effective method for flushing I have is. So for now, I'm just going to make a bunch of arrow shafts. Might move on to just making a bunch of short bows, which I could out later. I don't know. Just see how it takes me. And hopefully we'll be back soon with uh, 70 fletching. Hey, there's 70 fletching. Not too bad of a grind, I guess. I did make a lot of arrow shafts, but I just ended up switching to U-short bows, so now I have about just shy of 5,000 unstrung ones that I'll uh, end up alking later or string them or just sit to rot in my bank. But now it is finally time to go finish that elite clue. 
Hopefully there aren't any more long detours in store for me. All right, this isn't a long detour, but it is a very annoying step. I have to kill a barbarian in the water pole cavern. Uh, what is this place even called? Ah, uh, yes, the ancient cavern. Bit of a scary place to go into, but it should be fun. All right, I kept getting kicked out, but it turns out I haven't even done barbarian training on my account at all yet, so I didn't even have access to this place. But this time, I'm gonna actually go complete the clue for real. And next clip, I should be finally at the actual redwood trees. The whole point of this video. Finally hit level 98 woodcutting, and before we finish off the 99 here, I'm gonna go chop some arctic pine logs and buy ourselves the full forestry outfit. Got all of our logs together here. A grand total of 661k, which honestly, if you were a main account, that's not bad at all. The one big downside to the forestry outfit though is you do need the lumberjack set. Which honestly, I think the lumberjack set looks better in most cases, but I do want to actually finish the forestry log and the forestry outfit itself is not that bad. Okay, it does look a little goofy, but it is what it is. And by the way, I am so close to 99, so next clip you see should be me actually getting the cave. According to this funny little chart that's slowly sliding off screen, 67.8% of you that watch my videos are not subscribed. Why do you keep coming back here and not subscribing? Like, just press the button. Just, just press subscribe. I could not think of a single place better to get this 99. Uh, well, except maybe Wintertalk, because I did a lot of woodcutting there technically in the beginning of the count. But for most people, the very first oak tree you'll ever be able to chop right here in Lumbridge by the Woodcutting Tutor. And there you have it, our second 99. Level 99 log chopping. Very nice. Looking snazzy. And shout out this AFK guy, Zonklul, for being the only person in view of my achievement. Even though he probably wasn't here to see it. We have a grand total of 8 beginner, 7 easy, 7 medium, 3 hard, and only the one elite clue we had from last episode. Starting this one off by blitzing through the beginner clues. Yeah, that's about to be expected. Much of nothing from those, but those are not the ones we usually get spooned on. It's usually the easy clues. <laughs> exactly what I said. A three triple itemer easy clue. Holy moly, that is a fucking banger. Oh, black wizard robe gilded. That is like, yes, please. That is my favorite wizard trim. I know in a previous episode, I said I had the trifecta, but there's actually four wizard trims and I totally forgot about my favorite, like an actual dummy. And I was still talking, but only one more log out of that. Time to move on to the mediums. And I'm gonna say it, ranger boots, yada, yada. I say it like every time you see me open a medium clue, but it is something I really need to get for the series, you know, best in slot, it's in, the, it's in the intro. You need ranger boots for the best in slot. Come on. Okay, double log and a master clue. Pause the opening. I gotta go see if I can actually do any of this. Ooh, a barn step. Uh, this master clue might be done for already and I just got it. All right, let's go figure it out. Yeah, I have no clue how to actually get that. I'm pretty sure it's very difficult due to how expensive they are on the Grand Exchange normally, but uh, you know, I might be able to do it. I'll let you know in a minute. Yeah, that seems like absolute garbage. I'm just gonna drop and continue the opening here and if I get another one, so be it. And if I don't, I'll try and figure out this Greenman's Ale. Hey, another double logger. My clue scroll RNG is just what keeps me going on this account sometimes, I'll tell you, man. Like, whew, feels so good. Oh, I don't even care about that ancient page. I actually got a magic short bow, finally. 
that's actually a humongous upgrade because I bought the magic shortbow and bew scroll like episode six. I don't even know. That was like forever ago. That alone has to make all these clues worth it. Time for the hards. Okay, well, there's actually a back to back magic shortbow. That's kind of funny. Did so many clues without getting one and now they're just coming in left and right. I need to go bank, but I forgot a TP, so I'm gonna cut again. <laughs> all right, one more hard casket. Come on. Oh, okay, just some more Alks. All right, now surely this elite clue is gonna be our first unique item, right? Right, come on. <gasps> no way, I actually, that's like the only ornament kit I can even use, I think. Dragon Scimitar ornament kit? That is, that's actually so cool. I'll still be using that for like the next two years, man. Oh, that looks so much cooler. Actual factual new drip. Honestly, that, that would match the attack trim, I believe. 188 to 200 logs from that opening as well oh my goodness that that actually felt so much better than just ripping them open as i get them too man i don't know all right i'm about to get a cooking level here but more importantly what's next well i am gonna get a beaver i have to get this beaver my main account has been here since the creation of this series nearly 60 million wood cutting xp no beaver i'm going to stay here until i get the beaver or until i die and i don't think the tree is going to kill me so i'm staying here until i get a beaver either you're never going to see this video or the next clip one of my two accounts will have the beaver it's been about four or five days since i got 99 now i've honestly been slack on the clue scrolls but i managed to get four done so gonna open it maybe get something cool Keep me going for another few days. I don't know. I just want this beaver, man. Wait, 452k from an easy clue scroll? What the hell? I wish I could actually sell these. They're so expensive. And much nothing else. I mean, you know, one log, big high number from an easy clue. Yippee! Uh -huh. I'm gonna see you when I get the beaver. Psych, I actually forgot the one last forestry collection log item the funky shaped log now if i get the beaver on this account i can actually get rid of this that's cool if not minus bank space plus l you get the idea all right next clip i'll be cutting to the beaver you know i want to let's go to the beaver i've i've get it and i'm not even here dude i'm actually free i'm I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. It's been so long. Oh my goodness. 62,966,810 XP just for the beaver. I don't know if I've said this before, but I actually don't really like the beaver, but I really like the fox transmog. So you'd think that I probably wouldn't have even wanted to do this considering I don't like the base pet. But to me, this was going to be an in and out month or two adventure. Turns out it's actually six or some shit. I don't even know. I'm just glad to be free. And while we're here, forget about the drip quest for a minute. I have nearly 300 caskets I've been saving up from whenever I began the beavering until now. I'm not going to show all of this, but if I get anything crazy, you'll see me then. Otherwise, pretty much just see you at the end whenever I have all the items. All right, it took me like four hours to open all the clues, including the time it took to do the masters I got. But for the sake of my hard drive and for your viewing pleasure, um, yeah, I didn't really get anything good. My main account does not have the cracked RNG like the hardcore does, so I wasn't expecting anything. I did get a gilded kite shield, which was about seven mil. So that's something. All in all, it's about 30 million clues and about 48 million logs. So was it worth it? Definitely not, but I do have a beaver now and about two more months of membership to the hardcore. So pretty good timing if I say so myself. And next episode will be some very exciting new Varlamore content. I'm looking forward to trying out the bosses blind and hopefully we can get our hands on something cool. Welcome back to Drip Quest. Today we have a very special episode. It's finally time for Varlamore. And you might be thinking, that doesn't look like Varlamore, what the heck? I've been scammed. And you'd be right, this is actually not Varlamore. Very astute. However, before we actually get around to the new content, here's every single filler level and thing that I did, really quick. All 
All right, you got all that? No, too dang bad. Basically, I'm still getting levels for Song of the Elves. Just because there's a new continent out doesn't mean I'm gonna forget about the actual big main progress goal of the account. Of course, still gonna get around to Song of the Elves, just not quite yet. Oh my God, it's finally here. Our first major content update on the hardcore. I mean, I, th there was that little like rat, but you know, I, that's not like a major update, I would say. But just because I'm that lazy right now, I'm not actually going to experience this on my main first. I'm going in here fully blind. Is that a bad idea? Yes. Do I care? No, not really. Also, I figured it would probably make this video much more interesting if I actually have no clue what I'm doing. And what will I be doing, you might ask? Um, everything, actually. Well, no. Uh, everything but the Colosseum because I heard it's not a safe death and I also heard it's really freaking hard so everything but that and we'll see how it goes. This video is probably going to include me doing a lot of random ass stuff but how else am I going to know that the citizen pickpockets for 3 GP? Or this guy right here pickpockets for 85 like that's actually really good I wonder what the odds are on that. Might be Artie Knights V2 but with double the money. Who knows? I don't. At least not yet. I'm sure there are already 90 billion Varlamore locked accounts, but they got it made here. Honestly, it seems like a nice chunk or a nice region. Should I make a Varlamore locked account and just be like the nine billionth and first person? I mean, it's as good as time as any. I mean, we got part two coming in a few months. I don't know. It could be a fun little side series. Somebody write that down. I wear the face of death. What do you mean? I'm, I'm a hardcore. I've never died. Unless you count LMS, but I've never died for real. All right, I'm making my quest line prediction right now. These two fuckers are sus. I don't know why, but mark my words, they're gonna end up being some sort of crazy duo boss fight. Like, the vibes are just off. Alright, it seems like whenever one of these urchins distract the merchant or wealthy citizen, I keep thinking they're merchants for some reason, but it seems like it's a 100% chance to pickpocket, which is actually kind of crazy. I'm not a big thieving fan, so I'm not gonna investigate this right now, but add it to the to-do list. To-do list number one, steal stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to be looking for a specific guy, but uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't find him. Okay, I can confirm it is not just a random pickpocket. It's just this guy over here in the blue shirt. I was just wasting my time. Wait, is there a new POH here already? Okay, no, I guess it's in the next part then. I'm hoping it'll be in a cool spot at least. Damn, this shop's got all kinds of food. This is a, this is a very good grocery store. They don't eat like this back in Varrock, I tell you that much. What do you mean bring two attack styles? What is this guy gonna do, destroy me? Oh my goodness. And I can't even use the bank chest here either because why would I, you You gotta be a Colosseum expert to use this thing. Like what, what, what? All right, I am absolutely kitted out. This guy stands no chance. I swear if he's like some crazy boss, I'm gonna lose my mind. Bro, this guy sucks. Like here's how we make an interesting quest fight. Uh, Yeah, he just has prayers now. Like, are you kidding me? Like. What? Oh, of course. Why wouldn't we have the NPC follower that wants to take us to stop and smell the roses every five seconds? I mean, uh, at least the fountain is two feet away. Where the hell do I go? Oh, I'm lost. Oh, I found him. Okay, here's the freaking crate. It took me every other crate, but it's in this one. <laughs> this is rough. I'm telling you, these two are sus. Like, Surely they like planted the evidence while I was rounding them up or they're gonna try and kill me or some something fishy like I'm I'm not feeling it. I don't believe you. Damn bootleg scimitar hit a 50. What the hell? Give me one of those. Yeah, joking aside, killing him outright was a little fishy, but I don't know, man. Oh, I got my own bird. One of you can tell me in the comments how this is pronounced, but unless I'm told otherwise, I'm calling it a quetzal. Like a pretzel, but but with a Q. Where am I supposed to go? He said fly straight there, but it's locked. Guess we're just gonna go to the Hunter's Guild. All right, this place does look really cool, but I need AFK, so I'm just gonna log out right here and cut to when I'm back. I sometimes ask myself why I even say this because I cut this part out anyway, so I'm not talking to nobody but myself. Unless I leave this in here because it's awkward and might be funny now. Haha, <laughs> who knows? I'm kind of crazy. You know what else is kind of crazy? The fact that 69.2% of you are still not subscribed. I mean, come on, if at least 0.2% of you subscribe right now, I could be at an even 69%. Or maybe if a lot of you watching this right now subscribed, I could flip those numbers around, which would be even crazier. Oh God, I'm running out of time. The next clip is already here. All right, I'm back, and wouldn't you know it, my client crashed. <laughs> so I'm not even back. 
Okay, now I'm back. This time, I'm not lying. I'm actually in the game. Ah, oh, my eyes, what is all this crap? And none of it's even in stock. What is a mixed hide based? Why is it almost 12K? I don't know. All right, it might get a little confusing from here, but we're starting this quest now. Add first light, add the Hunter's Guild. Uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna make this into a watchable video, but let's go. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I see, I was supposed to give it to him. Haha, <laughs> who would have thought? Not me, not this guy. All right, I'm pretty sure this guy is southeast and we're supposed to go northwest. So, back to the other quest. What was the other quest called? Twilight's Promise. That's the one. Back to doing that. Oh, I think this is the new Perilous Moons place which from my understanding is basically just barrows too. Okay, yeah, I can't even do this quest, so we'll find out later. Checklist number two, or did I call it a to-do list? I don't know, list item number two, come back here. Write that down, me in the future. Thank you, bye-bye, see you next clip. Hello, I'm glad you're not dead yet because I definitely took that bird over here. He just like, ooh, that, that guy flew, I flew around the map, woohoo. Uh, <laughs> didn't walk here. No, no, no. Ah, yes, the plot thickens. Those two little fuckers I thought were sus are actually previous kingdom's descendant throne heir people. Yes, those are words that go together. Very suspicious. I do say so myself. I'm just saying that there's still quests left. You know, pop out as a boss. I'll be right. And if not, maybe in a sequel, we'll find out. Or maybe we won't, and I could be wrong, but until I'm proven otherwise, I'm just saying I'm right. I went all the way upstairs looking for you, and you were right here, just, just standing here like two feet away. Uh, I'm blind. That is the Twilight Promise quest completed. I feel like I worked my ass off for a single quest point, the bird, which I don't have half the landing spots at, a teleport, which is probably pretty cool, and 3,000 thieving XP. That's uh, pretty lackluster, I gotta say. But now we can go do the Perilous Moons quest, which hopefully should be much more interesting. I don't care, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. All right, I should have read that dialogue a bit better, but it, thankfully the quest guide tells me where it is, which is northeast. So to the northeast, I go to kill a something another. Some, it just says creature, I have no idea. Stop talking to me, I wanna go in. I think I saw this place on Twitter before the update came out, but like, I really like the aesthetic of this place. Well, shucks, turns out the dwarves are racist. That's okay, so am I. Okay, quick disclaimer, I'm not actually racist. That was a joke. Yo, is that a insert shape name here that I can't think of off the top of my head? That's crazy. Who would have ever thought of seeing World of Doze in RuneScape? Is that a Dungeons and Dragons reference? Okay, I'm just predicting what other people might say, but uh, all joking aside, this room actually looks sick. Especially with the murals of the bosses on the walls. Like, I think this is a really cool looking place. And this inner area looks sick as well. There's like so many cool, unique looking mobs here. Like, the aesthetic of this place is on point. Yeah, talking about the quest though, I have to set up these camps, so I'm probably just gonna skip around until something cool happens. Didn't I have to drop a clue a little while back for a mithril square shield or something like that? Because it was like a really rare drop or a really high smithing level? Like, it's just in the shop now like this is a great iron man shop hey what the hell this guy just got two smithing levels that could have been my smithing xp man just got ripped off all right here's the fit check i'm going in there pretty confident i mean from my understanding like it's basically barrows too shouldn't be that difficult the quest version of these bosses might be even easier than the regular ones who even knows right now should i be doing this on my main account first so i don't risk my hardcore status yes but I don't really want to do these quests again and I'm eager to try some new content, so against my better judgment, I'm gonna do it. Well, 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 we find ourselves here again. Lost. <laughs> can, can I just read the quest dialogue? That's a good question. Uh, apparently not. Fun fact, I was supposed to talk to this guy, whose name sounds like a freaking pasta, but I walked right past. 
By the time this video comes out, I'm sure everybody already knows this, but if you drink this tea, it gives you a run energy back, and that's been a godsend here because I've had to run back and forth through these caverns about 40,000 times, and I've seen everybody here in like full bandos with fire capes, so it feels a little embarrassing being in rune with a woodcutting cape, but let's finally go and slay these bosses. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, my immediate first impression is confusion because I cannot tell if everybody else is even doing damage to it or if it's individual, but I just see everybody in which case it's just a complete clusterfuck of people on my screen. I'm noticing a lot of people are not even interacting with this special phase, but if it is individual, then I guess this doesn't matter. And if it's not, then I'm just doing all the work. Okay, I see the XP drops, but I don't see any damage popping up, so I don't think I'm doing this correctly. Ow, my weapon just came out the other icicle, so yeah, that was definitely incorrect. Dude, I'm so bad at dodging these tornadoes, it's not even funny. Alright, that is boss number one down, and that was not bad. Considering I have no idea what I'm doing, I think that actually went quite well. And I only use like five Karambons for that fight, so I'm just going into the next one, YOLO. Oh, hey, it just threw me right into a special attack phase. That's cool, love that. I have no idea how I'm supposed to dodge these Jaguars, but I can't move back because there's blood, and if I move out of the circle, it hurts, I think. I don't know. So none of the other players damage the boss, but... Are they healing it? Because it looks like it. Okay, this special attack is actually really easy. It looks like any of the other falling mechanics, but it seems so slow and forgiving. I mean, honestly, slower than the scariest one. This is not good. No, I took it off. No, no way. I just, I just died to this noob content. No way. No, 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 no. Oh my god, dude. Oh, that's how it ends. Well, that's it. Series over. Thanks for watching. I'm now retired. It was nice knowing you guys. Goodbye. Okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. Although I am dead now, and this is not an early April Fool's joke, by the way. This does not mean that my series is going to end. I mean, yeah, I was expecting a more heroic death, fighting something intimidating and actually hard, and not this easy Barrows 2 equivalent, so I thought. But you know what? If anything, I'm now free to just uh, full send it. Pedal to the metal, so to speak. Except for the fact that I still have to do skilling stuff for a max cape, but no more being afraid of death, no more prolonging quests or bosses because I'm a little baby. I have now conquered death and there's nothing left standing in my way, except my mental fortitude and willpower. You know, maybe I go 4,000 days dry and I work. I don't think I can actually say that on a YouTube video, so you probably heard just one long beep or whatever, but uh, yeah, nothing standing in my way. Yada yada, series not over, not being hardcore kind of less cool or whatever. I didn't really care. But enough rambling, we got revenge to go get. Ah, nothing like a nice cup of revenge. I mean, arguably, the worst part is that that wasn't even the last boss, so let's see if this one would have killed me anyways. All right, I am a little bit slow, but what I will say about this boss is, like, it's a lot more intuitive. Like, visually, you see the boss, you click on it, and you pay its attack. Like, it just makes sense, unlike the Jaguars, to me at least. <laughs> I don't know how that guy even moved, but he just immediately got killed. At least I'm not the only one dying here. Okay, the next special attack, also very straightforward, just like walk behind the ball, follow the ball. Ball is life. And not to sound like a big old whiner because I died to the blood boss, but like, am I the only one that thinks that that was not very intuitive at all? I mean, I guess the ice boss wasn't super intuitive, but it was just like you light a brazier, hit a block. Blood boss was dodge blood rain and question mark on the Jaguar phase? I don't know, but I think that the Eclipse is definitely the best of the three moons. Alright, that is the third boss finally slain. Let's go turn in this quest. There is Perilous Moon's quest complete. 
and a nice tidy bit of Slayer XP getting us level 54. And before anyone asks, was that worth dying over? No, but I do have a chest of the actual boss loot, so let's go see if that was worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna go off a limb and assume that's basically the bolt rack of this place. Um, Swamp Tar is obviously garbage, but 43 water orbs is pretty good. And the irrits are always welcome, I suppose. Okay, I had to do at least one more run to see if the loot's any better. Come on. Okay, that's even worse than the first time. God dang it. So it turns out these bone shards I keep getting everywhere are worth about 5 prayer XP each up here at the bowl north of the altar. And all you have to do is bless a jug of wine, put it in the bowl, sacrifice the shards, and it's actually a really nice little method of getting XP. You can bless your normal bowl into the altar and break those down as well, and it's about equivalent to a gilded altar, so if I was still a hardcore, this would definitely be an amazing method. Now that it's not too much of a risk to go into the wilderness, the chaos altar is better. But, I don't like the Chaos Altar, and I don't like the Wilderness that much, so this method is actually sick. Alrighty, that's it. You are officially caught up with the entire Drip Quest series thus far. I just want to give a huge thank you and shout out to my channel members, NPZ and Distro at the Drip Enjoyer tier, and Johnny, our resident drip expert. You guys are absolute legends and help me make videos like this possible to begin with. If you want to have your name in the credits like this, among some other neat perks, click that little join button below. But thank you guys so much for watching Drip Quest, and I'll see you back in episode 15, which I guess will technically be the start of season 2. It's kind of crazy to think that we've already come this far, but there's still so much left to do. And as an added little teaser, here's the new series intro. I'm on a quest to obtain every best in slot item in old school RuneScape on a fresh hardcore Iron Man. Yeah, about that. Losing my hardcore status doesn't mean that my journey is over. If anything, I'm now more motivated than ever to reach my goals. Although I might not have been able to do it on a hardcore, I will get a max cape, I will get every best in slot item, and of course, I gotta get some drip. This is still Drip Quest, just slightly less cool.